Okay, I will call the meeting to order. And you don't need to mess around with your computers because we won't need them for tonight. Um, <coughs> not much to discuss about uh, logistics because uh, it's not going to be the ordinary type of meeting. And I be, am I being heard okay, Kelly? Okay, great. Um, <coughs> the first item is to approve the agenda. Is everybody happy with the agenda? Yes. Okay. Thrilled. Next item on the agenda is general business and appearances. Ordinarily, this is an opportunity for any member of the public to uh, address the council on any topic that is not on the agenda. Uh, we will certainly take comments on topics that are not on the agenda, but also if any members of the public are participating and would like to be heard on the topic of tonight's meeting, which is City Council strategic plan. We would hear from you about that too. And uh, I'll ask Kelly if there are any people seeking to be recognized. Okay, nobody is seeking to be recognized. So now we can move to the main business, which is City Council strategic planning session and pass it right off to Paul. It's, it's an honor to be here with you all. Uh, I don't have an agenda of my own personally to bring to this meeting, but we do have a sort of structure that we're going to walk through. I'm, I want to give the floor to the city manager, Bill Frazier, to sort of set the tone about how the goals work with your annual work plan, and then I'll review the agenda, and then we'll walk through efficiently but in an open way. We're not making hard decisions tonight. We're exploring what some of the big goals are. We're also not trying to fine line out strategies for everything. But we do have time to brainstorm and, and think about those things. So I'll, I'll walk through some of that uh, in just a second. But, but Bill, kick us off. Thank you, Paul. And it's always great to have this session. This is one of the only times, really, we have all year where we just get to sit down in a room and talk about what's important. So it's, it's good, and it's good to have a facilitator so the mayor and I and the team can all participate without the, the trappings of a formal meeting. Um, from our perspective, staff perspective, and I think for your benefit, what, what we hope to get out of this meeting at the end of it, or what, however many meetings it takes, is some sort of clarity about what's the most important to the city council, you know, big goals and particular projects and items and strategies. Um, we can come back to you with suggestions for specific projects and, and that kind of thing. Um, and this really guides our work plan during the course of the year, where, where we put our emphasis, and obviously we're about to do the budget, so if there are a lot of things that you think are important, we would include those in, you know, try to reflect this plan in the budget, or at least seek guidance from you to then prioritize further if we, you know, if we're not within your budget goals. And then lastly, it sets, uh, for those of you that have been on the council longer, know that once we finish this process, depending on what comes out of it, you'll see sort of a filled in, um, agenda for the year almost like you know as things come back so right now if you look at the upcoming meetings there's a lot of blank spots but you know what's happening in November January once this is done then some of your items will show up as now because this really drives what shows up on council agendas these are things that you've said are important enough to spend time on kind of if you remember when we did the orientation we talked about how do you want to spend your 250 hours this is really helping set that and I say that, and I know Paul will get back to this, but one of the outcomes of this process isn't necessarily to decide every issue. So, it, no, right. Well, I mean, because we could be here all night, right? So I'm just making this up. But let's say there was a zoning issue, right? And we, someone said we really need to have more density, and someone said we really need to have less density. You know, we could spend all night debating the policy issue of density, but what I think we could say is, it's important, this is an important issue. The council, council needs to make a decision about zoning density and we'd like to do that in April. So we don't really spend all the time fighting about that policy, but what we agree is this is an important enough issue that we wanna spend some time on it and get staff work and those kind of things. So, so you don't have to wrestle everything to the ground. Obviously, if things are unanimous, do you really wanna move with things that that's helpful, but um, part of it is to identify areas that need your attention and your discussion and your decision. We per today provided you, uh, our staff met this morning 
gave a quick outline. This isn't meant to be uh, telling you what to do, but sort of things that were on people's minds, projects that we've got going, to give you a sense of stuff we're already working on, but you could also add, subtract, multiply, and divide. It was really just sometimes people want some help getting started, so it's a, it's a little nudge, but it's not meant to be, um, you know, this is your meeting for you. You're the elected officials. You need to set your goals and priorities for the next, certainly for the next 12 months, but really even, you know, your vision for the future, knowing that councils may change over the course of time and may alter these, but at least your, your particular group is saying this is where we want the city to go. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Paul and let you all do your work. Thanks so much, Bill. So if we take a look at the agenda, we've got a few big blocks of work here. And the first is to, to really look back at the vision, mission, values sheets that came from the last couple of years of process, say, is there, is that vision still true to us? Are there needs? We, when we, we aren't going to like micromanage and get all the language that if there's changes tonight, but we'd, we'd say, you know, is this going in the right direction? Are there things we need to change? And set up for, for f future work around that. Um, really review those goals from, from uh, the 22-23, think towards 24, what's changed, what, what's most important to us now. Brainstorm those goals, put some things on the wall. There's no right or wrong answers. Everything is in play for the course of the evening. So we'll put ideas up, we'll review them, and then we'll have the chance to, you, you know, you're really trying to get your fellow counselors to vote for the thing that you think is most important. So we'll have some time to champion the ones that are most important to you that you think the, the city council should really rally around over the course of the next year and, and inform the work of, of city government. Um, then we'll do some a quick prioritization exercise to see which ones are the absolute top ones. We'll also be considering as we go, is this a big overarching goal, like an arena of work, or is this a particular strategy to advance that, like, like a particular housing project versus the issue of expanded housing, right? Um, and then we'll have some time after we've come up with the five to eight goals, whatever you all think are your core priorities. Um, are there particular strategies that ought to be listed out now as some of the work that you'd like to see moving forward through the course of the year? And again, we're not defining those as you know, decisions that are, are forcing action today, but, but you're first thinking around some of the strategies that you think might be most effective in moving these goals forward. Okay? So just... Can I have one piece of clarity? Yeah. Just, I forgot to mention, what you come up with today will be draft and outline form. We'll then take it and put it back. And if we have to have more conversation, we will. But at some point, this, this plan will be on a council agenda you know, regular agenda and you will vote to adopt it. So you will take a final action, but it won't be tonight, just so people. Yeah, so, so you're laying the ground. We're, we're laying the thinking together that will later be voted upon and adopted. Um, so before we start, though, um, I don't know you all. And uh, it just, you know, Bill said, do you do these opening exercises? And I said, no, I really hate them. <laughs> but let's do one anyway. Uh, <laughs> Um, and what, what I would ask each city councilor or and the mayor to do is to just take a second and tell us why did you run for office? And, and I'd like it if you could pose it as a positive affirmation <laughs> rather than say, I, damn it, the taxes are too high and I ran this up, you know, lower the taxes. But, but to say something in a positive way that like affirms something from your heart that is why you love Montpelier or why you wanted to be on city council and what you want to move forward. And I see you nodding, Lauren. So, uh, Laurel, so I'm going to start with you. Great. <laughs> um, Lauren Hurl. Uh, so, yeah, I, mean, I, I first ran whenever it was five ish years ago and then have kept running. Like, I have worked on federal policy, state policy, and just kind of realized, like, in your communities where the rubber meets the road and where like projects actually happen or not and and like I love our community and you know everything I do I'm like what future are we leaving my kids and all of our kids and so just being able to like 
come into city government and try to, you know, leave it a little better in a few years uh, that I serve was just my inspiration of like, but just try to get some stuff done for the Thanks. community. Kim? Um, yeah, I've been, Kim Heaney, I've been part of the community for a while too, and, and it seems like I had a chapter in my life where I was on the school board, and I thought it was one of the best civic opportunities I participated in, so having had a couple decades off from that, uh, it seemed like a good time to get involved again, and this felt like a good way to contribute. The, all the conversation about housing got me kind of excited because that's what I do, and um, so here I am. Uh, Pelin Cohn, um, I moved here seven years ago. This year will be my seventh year. Uh, I'm Turkish American, and I've uh, attended a leadership program, and my capstone was how uh, create more inclusive environment for immigrants in local offices. Then I start doing a research, and my curiosity took me so many information, and my friends told me, you know what to do, why don't you do? So I said, hmm, okay, then I went to home and said my family and my husband, oh my God, she has another idea, <laughs> fine. And then um, I decided to be uh, here at the table and represent 3% um, of Montpelier population and I'm very happy being here. It created such a great positive environment and nice friendship for me. Thank you so much. Sal. I'm Sal Alfano. Um, I came to Vermont in 1969. I met my wife in the registration line at college. I like to tell people I came to Vermont and married the first person I met. <laughs> <laughs> but we raised our kids in East Cows, which is a small, you know, small town. I was pretty active. There was on the school board. I was building dugouts for the baseball field and. Then we, my job took us to Washington, D.C., which was a wonderful city. I loved it, but we we're completely anonymous. You know, it's like stuff happens, and you never see anybody you know. You know. Um, and when we moved back, we wanted to be in Montpelier. Uh, and, you know, we were in a neighborhood of people who were concerned about issues, and, you know, we got to know them, got to talk about it. And uh, actually, they asked me if I knew anybody who wanted to run for council. And I racked my brain, but um, in the end, I thought, you know, being engaged in a town like Montpelier, um, maybe I can contribute. So that's why I ran. Great. Uh, likewise, I've been here some 53 years and uh, been very involved in, in city government in lots of ways, job and family and kids. But the opportunity to, when it came, was one to change the ratio of females on the city council at the time, uh, as also as wanting to always build in a future vision, that, that your budget, that your actions were building towards something, not just staying in a framework of what do we have to protect. So that's been very important to me. Great. Well, I, I didn't run for office, but I used to work. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I, you know, my Bill Fraser, I've been city manager here since 95. I moved here for this job, so I've lived here 28 and a half years, raised four kids in the community, came here with two under two, and now I have, you know, four graduates of Montpelier High and four graduates of colleges, so it's been a while. Tim was on the hiring committee. Uh, we were both uh, considerably younger at the time. And, uh, but you know, I, I have been, my, my grandfather was a main state legislator. I got introduced in, 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 interested in government and those kind of things. I was a middle schooler during Watergate, so I got engaged with sort of all of that. And I uh, went to college, got a degree in public management and worked in some small towns in Maine and New Hampshire, was working in Cambridge, Massachusetts uh, as a middle manager, got my master's degree there. And, Wife and I had kids decide we wanted to move someplace a little more kid friendly than Cambridge and Somerville, as much as we loved being there. And uh, we, we made a little list of communities in Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont that had a council manager, former government, number one, were interesting places to live and work, you know, fun, good communities, had a history of stability with council managers, because there are many communities that churn, churn people out, you know, firing the manager every two years is kind of the way of life. 
and uh, and was a place where, given my um, uh, career at the time, I had a chance of getting hired. So like a Portland, Maine probably would have been too big. A, it would have fit all the criteria, but it would have been too big a shot at the time. So Montpelier was the only one in Vermont that was on the list. Uh, but it was the first one that came up. And, uh, and so, uh, and I, I tell this story because, uh, you know, obviously I've loved being here. I mean, we've had our ups and downs. Um, but I remember coming up to interview him. Our, our second child was literally due. And cell phones weren't a big thing then, but I had a cell phone. I remember going to all these interviews saying at the beginning, everyone, I might have to leave at any time and drive back to Boston. So just, just so you know. I remember getting home at like midnight after this whole day. And, you know, wife said, how did it go? And I said, you know, I don't know if they're going to offer me the job. I don't know if we'll work it out. But I can tell you, those are people I'm meant to work with. We totally connected. And the staff at the time, none of whom were here anymore. Well, Bob was. <laughs> um, and uh, the, the council at the time. And uh, it worked out. So uh, they offered me the job the day before Patrick was born. And a week later, I was at Heaney's Real Estate looking for a house. <laughs> and uh, there we are. Charlie sold me a house. It's Charlie Wiley. So, Thanks, Bill. There we go. Jack. All right. I'm Jack McCullough. I've uh, been on the council or mayor for, well, I guess it must be six years now, because I kept saying, keep, kept saying fine, but uh, <clears throat> fine. But I've lived here for 40 years. And uh, I always say this, that Montpelier is really the best place in Vermont to live. Um, I, my wife and I have been here. My, we moved here when my wife was seven and a half months pregnant. And, and so we had, had our, raised our two sons here, both graduated from Montpelier High School. One still lives in Montpelier. And uh, <clears throat> the entire quality of life in this city, I have uh, really appreciated from uh, from the time we hit here. It's a welcoming community, or it's, I've considered it to be a welcoming community. It's been, uh, we have a lot going for us from the professional theater to the, uh, <clears throat> to the beautiful downtown, to the feeling of community as you go into the stores. And, uh, and over the years I've been here, I've been in a, involved in a lot of political activity and I've spent Many, many, before I was even on the council, I spent many, many hours in council meetings, mostly advocating for housing. And, and that's really what uh, got me to thinking, well, I could, I could do this. I could be adv advocating for housing and, and for the other values that, uh, that are important to me. Energy saving. As a member of the council, not just uh, on the outside. And, uh, and I have really appreciated being on the council and having a group that is willing to work well together. And I've observed councils that have not worked well together. And so having, having, it's important to have a group that works well together and uh, can commit to uh, cooperating to achieve the goals that we share. Thanks, Mayor. I'm, I'm Carrie. I'm uh, in my first term still as a city councilor. It kind of feels like it's been a lot longer than that in some ways, actually, which is interesting. You shouldn't be kidding. But I think, you know, I come to this from a very idealistic place about really believing in democracy and really believing in the power of people within the community having control over their government and government as an expression of the individuals within the community. So. So I have a lot of idealism about it. It's um, you know, certainly different in practice than it is in, in ideals. But I, I think that the way that Montpelier runs itself is um, it's a really remarkable place in that we have a lot of accessibility. We, um, we're able to, you know, we, we know our neighbors. We talk to our neighbors. Um, we hear from them when we do things that they don't like or when we do things that they do like. And the opportunity to really uh, be part of um, not just turning things over to you know whoever's in charge, but actually taking control of it ourselves as our community is is what really brought me here. So um, I, I would say I'm still trying to figure out ways that we can make take the structures that we have in how we run city council and how we run city government and incorporate the rest of the people in Montpelier into that. We're, we're working on that, but um, that's a big part of what gets me very excited about being here. 
Well, terrific. I'm sure that the things that brought you here are going to resonate in your goals for what should happen in the next year. And it's interesting to hear you talk about strategies and your, your, the sense of importance of vision and then you sharing that perspective of democracy. And this is where it happens, right? And when you set your goals, you're really setting a big framework for, for what's going to happen in city government for the next year or so. It's pretty serious business to represent all the people behind you. And uh, again, it's an honor for me to be here. Um, l let's uh, get right into the agenda. We're a little late because we started a little late because a couple people. But uh, <laughs> Tim. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, let's. <laughs> He can handle it. Uh, um, but let's, uh, let's look at this, uh, this first major part of the agenda in terms of the vision, mission, and values of, of the city. As, as you know, I, I expect this is something that's been batted around and been looked at over and over by staff, by city councils year to year. And it probably changes and evolves as things go forward. But have you all had a chance to read it and, and think about it? And, are there observations on it? Is is it basically still work? Does it make sense for us to to read it? To kind of go through it? Yeah, let's. Yeah. Is there someone who'd like to read the vision statement? Do you folks have this with you? Um, is there a city councilor who'd be willing to read the vision statement? I've got it right here. Yeah, I have it right here. Okay, go ahead, Sal. Montpelier is an engaged and growing city with a population that reflects cultural and economic diversity. The city balances being a hub for businesses, arts, outdoor recreation, and other cultural events while ensuring there are strong core municipal services, environmental protections, a variety of housing, and support services for all. So let's, let's start with that. You know, our, does that statement work as a vision for the future of the city? Um, it's a description of the city as a balance point between the businesses, outdoor recreation, arts, and all those, the hub role that it plays, and then the strong municipal services, the environmental protections. Housing, yes. So the, the th I think this is a great vision statement, but the thing that struck me as missing from it possibly is something about economic security and economic conditions for people in the city. And um, I would probably put that in there, um, though it's certainly there's a place for it in the goals and everything, but that this is a place where people can afford to live and can you know thrive economically. Is people there, at all levels of all economic levels. Yeah, Bill, is one of your staff going to be officially taking notes for us so that we have a record of suggested yes. changes here? Kelly's going to do that? Yes. OK, thanks. It does mention economic diversity. Yeah. I just feel a little uncomfortable. I see that more as a chamber of commerce. Um, economic it, security? Economic. Uh, how, the city has. I guess influence that would bring employers in and employment and business, but we're really, I feel, it's on the fringe. Of, but that's all. So I wouldn't necessarily talk about it in terms of employers and employment. That's a part of it, but economic security encompasses a lot more I than know, that. But, but so yes. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, economic diversity. Uh, well, that's like food security. I would love for everybody yeah. food security, but. I but, but to me, it comes out from there. But maybe it comes vision. into the actions or so into it's an goals. action versus a vision. Maybe I don't know. Well, let, let's make note of it and, and you or maybe come just how, how you worded that. Yeah, I'm reacting to. Sorry. Thanks, Lauren. Just I almost wonder if, like, and sorry, this is kind of wordsmithy, but I wonder if it would get at what Carrie's saying. Just because in the first sentence it says, um, the vision, right? Okay, so, so it's an engaged and growing city with a population that reflects cultural and economic diversity. I wonder if we said like reflects, and this isn't the right word, but like accommodates or Supports. somehow, yeah, like yeah. fosters cultural and economic fosters. diversity, which to me like okay. indicates that you're trying to have a community that people like of that. A diversity can, can actually live in and thrive in. Okay, and you got several people nodding one way and another, yes. Okay. Hey, uh, yeah. Oh. yeah. You know, we mentioned housing uh, there. Um, I was thinking maybe we should add what kind of housing, because we talk about affordable 
it doesn't have to be affordable, but others are like more specific, yeah. right? Cultural diversity, economic diversity, they are very to the point or like environmental or yeah. like support, like core municipal services. But then housing is very general. This is a variety, which would mean, you know, maybe housing for diverse populations. But, but yeah. sh she mentioned the word affordable as well, which yeah. is mm -hmm. not in here, per mm -hmm. se. So. Yeah, so. I, I think with both of these, a variety and diversity could include people who have no money and no housing, and they live in terrible places, and they can't afford to pay their bills. That's diversity, but that's not exactly what we want, right? It's not your vision. Yeah. Okay. But we don't want everybody to be really, really rich and living in mansions either. So I'm not sure how to, how to phrase that, but the idea that this can be a place where people at a variety of income levels can live securely and safely and happily. Yeah. Other, other thoughts about the vision statement? Okay. Well, there's we if you if you think of something as we go down through the list, we'll we'll come back to it. Meanwhile, Kelly's caught those thoughts. We'll will they'll be there for your future contemplation and potentially wordsmithing to improve that. The mission statement is very brief. Is there someone willing to read the mission statement? Do you guys ha have it in front of I you? Have it right here. So, go for it, Sal. <laughs> you have a good radio voice, too. So. <laughs> sure. The city of Montpelier will be a leader in the state by providing excellent municipal services that align with community priorities through proactive communication and public engagement. That's the mission statement of the city of Montpelier. Yes? Yeah, I think it is good. Uh, how about saying excellent. Can we say what we mean by excellent? What's excellent when service yet, right? So mm -hmm. when I read the uh, statement, I can understand something else. Excellent. From excellent, yeah, but. Yeah, it might mean different things yeah, to different people. What, are, what we are trying to say when we are saying excellent. It's too general, I think. Yeah, do you have words that you'd suggest? Good question. <laughs> like, you know, services probably supported by public or included by, I don't know, like, I don't know the right word. Mm -hmm. But excellent could mean different things to different, different people, and it would be interesting to think about some of the other words that might be used there to. And, yeah, and we have the survey results, right? All the things people like about living in Montpelier and city. Maybe we can. Uh, take one of the like key terms from there because they already gave us so many explanation why they like mm -hmm. living in Montpelier, why they like about city services. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have anything specific in my mind. Okay. Uh, yes, Mayor. I, I have a, I have a thought about this, and you know, of course, you know, I was part of writing <laughs> writing this over over the last five or six years, and I as I'm thinking about it, I think this is good, but. Uh, but I almost would uh, would rebalance the uh, the emphasis in uh, in how this is written, so that uh, this starts out by saying we'll be a leader in in the state, and I wonder if what we should if our emphasis should really be we will provide excellent services to. Uh, to our residents by doing these things. And, and maybe we add to that, and this will make us a leader in the state, but that our emphasis is on providing great service. Mm -hmm. Yes. Karen. Yeah, I like that a lot. This was the, the, the part that stuck out to me about this was the leader part that, I mean, to me, that feels unnecessary. Like, that doesn't feel to me like me personally, like uh, an important goal for the city of Montpelier is to be a leader. The most important thing is that we provide excellent municipal services that align with community priorities and everything. And then we may end up being a leader that way. But th the way this is worded sounds like the most important thing we want to do 
is mm -hmm. be better than everybody else mm -hmm. and have everybody look to up, up to us and tell us how great we are. Mm -hmm. And that just does not feel like a value that I yeah. I don't want so to the, espouse. So the mayor's saying that if you, if you had that other clause first, then you'd be able to say... That would help. ...making us... Mm -hmm. the city, you know, an, an important leader for Vermont. So it could be reversed and cause and effect would be reversed a little bit in terms of the way it reads. Can you say pioneer? pioneer? A pioneer? That, instead of leader, like I like, like Montpelier passed the, this non-U.S. citizen voting, right? It is one of the very few cities in Vermont, but it's not being a leader, it's being like opening the way to others, like yeah. being a pioneer, like the first couple, first one, so. Modeling new ways of doing yeah, things. Yeah, like Actually, starting. You yeah. captured the essence of what that was supposed to be, yeah. or what it meant to the people who did it. Mm -hmm. I was around when it got done, <laughs> and been modified many times. Yeah. Uh, so you really captured the essence of what was behind it, it maybe. So that notion of, of taking leadership, pioneering in and, and doing things that things other municipals aren't. Of, yeah. that I mean, that's what makes you a leader on. for the rest yeah. of the state is when you're doing yeah. things that are yeah. both excellent and really well done in terms of management, yeah. but also then, modeling. Yeah, then when we talk about pioneering, then I have all the examples uh -huh. in my mind, right? I can, oh, yeah, Montpelier said it did this, did that. But when we say leader, I, so I cannot come up with yeah. Ideas like leader, being a leader. Leader is like kind of a more personal, like a person thing mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. So that's why I mentioned that. Okay, thanks. Sal? Um, at the risk of being accused of being curmudgeonly, could we align not only with community priorities, but with community resources through proactive communication and public engagement? I mean, do we want to just Priorities provide excellent services no matter what, whether we can afford them or not? Or do we want to provide them by aligning priorities with resources? It, it's a good, uh, I see a couple of heads nodding, and resources well, could mean. No resistance. Could be fiscal, but could also <laughs> be. A curmudgeon they put. Could be, could be human <laughs> resources, so, or volunteers and other people. You know, it could be all kinds of different resources, it's not just tax based. Sure. Yeah. But it's just not seeing a mission statement as putting limits. Uh, that again, it doesn't mean whatever. Priorities just, are limits. <laughs> yeah, well, it, let's. Uh, <laughs> we're, no, it's so grounds for, for further, yeah. Yeah. Kind further of thinking, offering? for sure. Did you want to say but something? I was just going to weigh in on that, which yeah. was to say, again, times have changed and clarity is kind. When, when it was written about aligning with community priorities, it meant that the co community would also have priorities about the resources, mm -hmm. like. It was all the priorities. Like, you know, so that was intended yeah. to be, yeah. we'll provide yeah. services yeah. within the community's yeah. priorities. Yeah. That could be financial, yeah. but you could also call that out. Mm -hmm. With regard to leader in the state, I think Don is right. It was just meant that we were willing to try things that people don't. Mm -hmm. So maybe you just say, Montpelier will provide uh, excellent and innovative municipal services and programs. And lead on leader yeah, in the state. Excellent is like yeah. too general. Excellent. How excellent. In a way, they're perfect. It's so, very specific. I, I think, again, to your Michigan statement, yeah. I think the thought here was we're basically saying we're striving for excellence. We, we're not, we want to be really good at what we do. And then later on, when we lay out our programs and our surveys and how we measure our program, you know, we, we then define excellence by how much we want to put into it. But then we're not just sort of getting the job done. You know, we're striving to do real, a really good job, and we're looking for a police department. We want a, an excellent police department. And I agree that what that means uh, is, is in the details of management and your goals and priorities, but in terms of a, just a general mission, we want to be excellent at what we do. We don't want to be mediocre. We don't want to be poor. We don't want to be average. We're striving to always be excellent at what we do. But again, yeah. whatever works for you folks. Yeah, one of your goals, right? Lauren had her name, hand up. Yes, Lauren. Oh, I just, on Sal's point, like I definitely had a similar reaction to Donna of like, to me it just, it's it's like immediately constraining and like, I, I think you can set a vision and goals and then work to find resources if it's a community priority and there's different ways to do that. So if you're like, you know, this is just what the same budget as last year is going to be, and this is all we can do. Like to me, it sets that sentiment, which I don't know if that's what you mean, but it feels very stifling 
to me. <laughs> well, let's think about where this goes. This is a document that you're you're thinking into, right? That has the opportunity to have iterations back to you. So, uh, I don't know, Bill. In the past, if city staff have taken these kinds of inputs and then reflected back with changes based on the, the work? Or is there another means that you would digest this thing as a board? All of the above. Sometimes yeah. they make a change. Sometimes they ask us to get back with the OK. Any, so it works for the council. Let, let's decide that at the end, then. Let's, let's go into this value statement piece. And Sal, do you want to read the value statement for everybody? Thank you. Do <laughs> you want me to read the whole thing? All yeah, yeah, read it all the way through. Because some people Thank things you. may be just great, and other things may need tweaking. Uh, the city of Montpelier is guided by the following core values. The dignity and worth of all people is recognized and respected. The city government will be transparent and accountable. All city activities will be conducted in a highly ethical manner. Innovation is encouraged and rewarded. Diversity, equity, and inclusion in the organization and community are essential. Climate change is real, and the city must work actively to address the, this issue. The city will be financially responsible with public money. City employees are respected, treated fairly, and recognized for their commitment to the community. Great. Is there anything missing as a value that that is like a whole in that value statement? Is there anything missing before we think about tweaks that might improve them? Yes, it's so Gary. I, I feel like there's something about um, strong communities, supportive communities, strong families, something about a community where people support each other and where you know, resources are available to help people who, who need help. And we all, like what happened after the flood? You know, the, the hordes of people who turned out to help each other. Um, that's a thing that happens in Montpelier. And I think it's a value that we have in our community, and I'd like to express it somehow. Together we are strong, and, and we helps. help each other yeah. out. as Strong, supportive communities. Um, I'm not sure how to word it, but I think that needs to be in there. I also think we have a lot of things about sort of how the city operates that mm -hmm. maybe if we if we don't want a really long list we could kind of combine like we could say the city government will be transparent accountable ethical and there was something else about like financially responsible, re financially responsible. yeah exactly <laughs> that could all be just one bullet point yeah why don't you guys work on one and submit it to Bill and you yeah. can send it to us in the draft? <laughs> and then we can make room for other for yeah. other bullet points. <laughs> yeah. yeah I think just to that point, I think the value statement was supposed to be about the city government organization, mm -hmm. not necessarily the community as a whole. That might be one of these. So the idea was you know, we have this big vision for the community. We as a city government have this mission and these are core values of us. So just mm -hmm. with that in mind. So okay. I agree that the community is strong is important, but I guess to the extent that we encourage that, that would be important. Yes. Yeah, I think there's a, a way for values, to, the value statement to be both of those things. So that it could be, this is how we conduct our business, and this is how we do our work. And so to have values that, you know, we value diversity, equity, and inclusion, we value climate responsibility, we value supportive communities, and we value uh, respect and dignity. And so all of these can affect how we treat our employees and how we conduct our, our own internal business as well as how we yep. do the work in the city. Yeah. Yep. Kelly, do you have notes on all that? <laughs> OK. All right. Anything else in terms of values that you see um, either misplaced in here or, or uh, where there's additional need? Sorry, go ahead. Lauren. I'm going to wait for someone else. Okay, carry. No, no, no. Lauren has her hand up. Oh, you did. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just, I, again, in the danger of being wordsmithy. I feel like the climate one. I feel like we had tweaked this last time, but it, but like, I'm wondering about adding in like, the city must do its part. Uh, to address climate change and foster climate resilience. Mm -hmm. I want to add something about like both. It, it's both we do need to, to get, get our own net zero and obviously with a 
enhanced focus on resilience following the flooding. I think it's like a both and that. Okay. Lots of resilience besides flooding. Lots of resilience. Yeah. And Lauren, um, what do you think about expanding that to other environmental concerns? And I'm not sure exactly how we'd write it, but um, address the issue of climate change and other uh, environmental impacts. I'm thinking, you know, a lot of what we've talked about waste and water and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I like that idea. Yeah, me too. And I, I think we're kind of, I'm hoping we're moving beyond this idea that climate change is a thing that's happening and we need to respond to it. And more like there's an environment we live in, there's all kinds of things that we need to do to be environmentally responsible. The climate, the climate has changed and is changing. I mean, it's not a, it's not a point of debate anymore. It's not a, a single problem that we need to solve. It's just something we need to take into consideration as we're considering how we dispose of our waste and how we, you know, deal with our parks and all of that. So something that captures environmental responsibility, but also naming climate, because we're not ready to not name it. So anyway. climate, <laughs> climate change, resilience. Uh, the, the, environmental the health of the the health of the environment. Yeah, sometimes they use sustainability yeah. to cover all the things like global warming, climate change, and sustain. sustainable. sustainable. Yeah. I don't okay. want to not name climate. Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't I, want to I agree. Out. I feel like that would be a backwards step. Yeah. Okay. But, but I think adding in and environmental sustainability yeah. as like a more broad catch-all. Is there anything else in, in here? Are we kind of? Good to see a new addition. One, yes. One thing that um, stands out for me here is the idea of hearing from from people who um, from all kind of walks of, of life and hearing from people who we don't normally hear from or making the I mean maybe there's something in there about I mean transparency isn't quite it but that 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 this, the community as a whole is engaged with city government in some way so that we're we're not just talking to each other like in this circle. So if we, <laughs> if we combined, as, as, as Kelly has on her list, the, the idea of combining transparent, accountable, ethical, and there's one other, financially responsible, and engaged with, this, with the residents of the city to. Yeah, something like that. You know, I think is probably that comprehensive statement. Yeah. OK, anything else on? All right. So again, you're not adopting anything. You you've got a draft that's going to come back to you, apparently from Kelly, that you'll be able to nuance, digest, and adopt at will as part of your strategic plan. Let's let's turn a corner. <clears throat> and do people have a copy of the goals and prioritized strategies from the 22-23 plan? Um, we we want to quickly go through the the six that were adopted last year around this time, I guess. And someone want to take a, someone want to read them off for them? Tim, you got them right in front of you. You want to read them for us? So you the goals or priorities? I think just the goals is fine. Goal one, improve community prosperity. Goal two is provide responsible and engaged government. Goal three is create more housing. Goal four is practice good environmental stewardship. Goal five is build and maintain sustainable infrastructure. And goal six is improve public health and safety. Okay. Any, we all know the difference between strategies and goals, right? The goal being the big overarching statement of purpose and the strategy being one of the means one of the step ladders or, or, or you know, tools that you'd use to get there. Um, so we're not trying to build a list of 30 strategies today, but we're trying to say, what are the arenas of work that are really fundamental that we should have a big goal? Um, knowing that lots of city government is going to be functioning and handling lots of small issues all the time, but as you look in terms of your policies and the work that the city council and government should be prioritizing, what are those big picture goals? And anyone want to comment on the six that that are there or have been there from the past year? I can 
I think these are <clears throat> this is a good set of goals. The question that is in my mind is uh, looks back three months. I think that we can't <laughs> we can't ignore what happened in July, and I'm, I'm just playing in my mind with whether the uh, whether it should be a top level goal to rebuild from the flood and uh, <clears throat> and plan for uh, re resiliency. Okay. Um, it, so clearly, that could come within a bunch of these, but it was such a such a big thing that happened to us that it may yeah. merit its own uh, top level yeah. goal. So w w I'm going to start writing goals, new brainstorm goals, and I've got it written down to put on the sh sheets. But is there anything in the, like, the past goals that you think, like, like, is there further discussion needed on the past goals? Tim, you got something. I was going to say, I think they're all good. We can work with all of them. It's just how we fill them up. The prioritized strategies that follow the, yeah. the headline, right? And maybe there, maybe there are other priorities that ought to be on the wall as well. So, so wh why don't why don't we take a second and we'll write? What, what was the word you used for, for yours? Rebuild. Re goal. Rebuild. And uh, and plan for uh, future resiliency. Yeah. It should it be resiliency or resilience? It's resilience. It could be resilience. It could be either. Probably. Yeah. So let's <laughs> use resilience. Okay. So I'm I'm just going to stick this on the wall. Yeah, go for 40. Are there other, when you step back from, like, let's not look at last year's goals. We can come back to them. But are there other things that ought to be big goals that, you know, when you're sitting in those council meetings, the things that you really want to be working on, you know, there's things you have to work on. What, what are the things you want to be proactive about? Dealing with the homeless issue. And is Services that, that they need to, I mean, not just homes, but the whole picture. Yeah. So should homelessness stand on its own as a big, like addressing homelessness? Or should homelessness be part of the housing conversation? Maybe they're two separate. Much more than that. I think our issue is that we've left it under housing. Yeah, I think it's much bigger. Okay. And is addressing homelessness good enough for now? As I'm a, as a team. Team. Yeah. And it's okay. You, you know, I, actually, I don't like addressing, and that's because it always infers that we have a solution versus I feel that we have, just like putting kids in school, you don't start on first grade to be ready to graduate. So in dealing with homelessness, there's so many issues that I just feel like we need to d develop a packet of services or packet of items of homelessness. I don't, addressing like, just seems too yeah, fine. I get it. And that, pack, that sounds like you're getting into the strategies for homelessness. Okay, it could be. But, but what's the verb for I know. like ending homelessness? Or like what's the goal that you would propose? To me, it's, it's reducing the, the, um, the hardship of homelessness. And lots of different steps, whether that's the bathroom, whether that's a shower, whether whatever, but but really reducing the the fallout. Tim, you were like, did you have a thought? Well, I was thinking because you, know, you said ending homelessness, and I hate to say it, but I don't think that's realistic. No. So no. it's more going to be, you know, within our community, can yeah. we help members of our community Some to steps reduce? Steps to the, do. It's more like accommodating. Right. Uh, well, come, yeah. But I don't want to say we're accommodating. No, I don't. I don't either. But that, yeah. that's reducing, more what it's reducing like. Reducing the impact. Lauren, reducing misery. I like reducing but, the impact. Lauren. What about something like supporting the unhoused as we work to create more housing? Or, I mean, maybe they're two separate ones. But yeah, like. I know. It's, it's not a big shiny goal. I mean, it's hard to, like, if you're the public. As, as, as we support. work to create housing for all. 
I mean, I'd reduce the hardship of homelessness. And, and, reduce the hardship of homelessness. And anything you do don't, towards giving them one service, one night inside, it's reducing that. Just yeah. small steps. We get so overwhelmed with a big solution that doesn't exist. Let's try it this way, like you say, and we may come up with better, a better oh, title. Welcome. Reduce. Reducing the, the hardship. The hardship of homelessness. So this one is, for me, this is falling under the kind of bigger picture of economic security or community security so that, because homelessness is, it's, it's a symptom, it's a thing that happens when people don't have their certain needs met. And there are other people who also don't have those needs met who don't end up homeless, but who need those needs met. So it's, it's sometimes homelessness is because you can't find a place that you can afford to live in. Sometimes it's because you can't kick your drug addiction. Sometimes it's mental health that you need. So all of this is about, I don't know what the way to say it, but I think the goal here of improved community prosperity is sort of trying to get at economic security. I would prefer to put it that way, because community prosperity sounds like we're all going to get rich and we're all going to make more money. Well, that's OK. That's fine. But, but that people's basic needs are met. So maybe that's what it is, is that people's basic needs are met. I think that's a, that's a core function of government, is to make sure that people's needs are met. So they, that includes housing, it includes, uh, yeah. you know. So we're, we're putting them on the wall. We're not adopting them. We're right, just right. saying, we're, so, it's, so anyone can get anything on the wall. So what's <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try. Meet <laughs> me people's basic needs. or ensure that basic needs are met, or something like that. OK. We have to put them close together, though. OK. What's another goal that the city ought to have for 2024? Yes. Um, oh. So like, um, maybe uh, being more global, or having a global mindset, like there's a term like global, local, like you can solve the problems locally, but you need to have a global mindset. So my experience is it Montpelier is a great town to live in, but very closed yeah. inside, like how we can make it open to externally, like. Is it like expanding multiculturalism or is it open, open Montpelier to yeah, I, I, I mentioned this um, to Bill, I think, a long time ago, and he said they, they discussed it before. Like, cities have, like, sister cities, yep. right? They have, um, like, contracts with cities in other countries. Yeah. So they go visit them, they come visit them, then suddenly they adopt that global mindset, like... Um, interacting with the rest of the world, not only, oh, yeah, it is our responsibility to fix the roads, to fix the water system, but how about just, you know, reaching out beyond. Connecting with the world beyond. Yeah, something like that, yeah. And it doesn't have to be like physical. We can always do it like digitally. It doesn't have to, we will go and do things, but just, you know, being more global, yeah. But I don't know how to make it like a one, one sentence. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. But connect, connecting with the rest of the world, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, something. Anyone have a good suggestion on three or four words that tie that idea? Well, I think that's what Palin said. Connect with the world beyond Montpelier. Yeah. OK, yeah. good enough. Yeah, there's a million strategies, right? Yeah, our schools do it, right? Yeah. Our school, colleges, they do this already. Okay. Someone else have one? Yeah. 
think the infrastructure is key. We still have, I mean, we've got kind of a big hole that we've got to work our way out of. And What's the verb you use with infrastructure? Um, improve, complete, transform. So we had address new or improved infrastructure needs last year and it seemed. Does that language work? Address infrastructure needs? Yeah. We have, we have the goal we have of building, building and maintain maintain sustainable, sustainable infrastructure. So, which I think is. Do you want to word that differently, Tim? Yeah. I mean, what behind your thoughts may be much more expansive than this? Well, build and maintain sustainable infrastructure is key. It's just, it's got to be in our goals to do it. And then, then it comes to the strategy. So, what are the five things you're going to do to drive that forward? Right. So, build and maintain sustainable infrastructure, infrastructure is still a part but that's last year, okay. so it's okay yeah. to put it on the wall. Yeah. Build that's and maintain sustainable infrastructure. So are you saying that anything we want from last year, we've got to tell you to put on the wall? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, we're okay. starting from I'm scratch sorry. right now. And All right. We're brainstorming. If if okay. there are things that... No, no, I, I just didn't... But we're going to come back to the I thought it was an anyway. addition to it. Sure. I just didn't okay. get it. Sustainable yep. infrastructure. So if we were going to wordsmith that one a little bit, I'm... Uh, might be not like one. effective, yeah, effective infrastructure or, you know, because sustainable just means it can keep going and, you know, we can limp along or we could. You know, to me, it's really like this well. thing for the wastewater treatment plant that we're making it more sustainable for itself. Okay, that's, that's another, what that means another to way me. of sustainable. Yeah. Maybe sustainable. it's not the right yeah. word, but yeah. just so you know what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we could, you, know, you guys may end up tweaking language on all these things. So we need public health and safety. Oh, say it. Yeah, improve public health and safety, I think, is a, is a goal that we ought to retain. Okay. I mean, we, we added homelessness, which was a, a strategy within that, but, which I like, but it seems like there's a lot more. Sal, it said improve public health. Public and health and safety. And safety. And I like to practice good environmental stewardship. I think it contains a lot. Practice good environmental stewardship. Until we get it right. Until we get it right. Okay. And are there good strategies next to that? Does Promote that conservation of river and water and land resources. Address climate change issues. Or what? Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder if planning for future resilience might cover a lot of that, but let's put it up. Yeah, well, and the concept of stewardship is very kind of patriarchal, like it's our job to take care of it. It's more, I think it makes more sense for us to figure out how to work with it. So it also that might be like a word. <laughs> like, what do you do to mm -hmm. steward it? Right. Um, but I'm happy to put it on the wall. You, you want? Well, the stewardship to me was a partnership. <laughs> that you're making and that you're, you're having your actions so that you're caring for it and not abusing it. But you can pick another word, but I just feel we need something more than what I saw up there. Now, are you going to let me put anything up there or not? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just so tell something me about environment has it. to be up there. You want me to write? <laughs> Donna, do you want me to write stewardship? I mean, I think people, you know, I think stewardship is okay to use as a term. You know, Native Americans were stewards in lots yeah. of ways of the land, right? It's, it, let's well, one minute we're we'll 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 smithy, the next minute we're not, so I don't know. But, but we need something about environmental up yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so what are you exactly doing? Exactly. Nice, like? good environmental. <laughs> I have the word stewardship. But okay, so say it for now. so I can write it down. Steward. Environmental stewardship. Yeah, practice right. good environmental stewardship. Okay. Flag for Kelly, the words in the desk. Yeah. Yeah. Can you the Jeez. Okay. Okay. I'm always going to say build more housing or create more housing. Yeah. I don't want to lose that one. Right. That's, that's a top level thing for me. Always, always. Yeah. Until we have enough. And, but I don't see us having enough anytime in the next six months or a year. Okay. Create more housing. 
I, I also think that the responsible and engaged government is one I would like to keep, provide responsible yeah. and engaged government. Yeah. Is there a, like, when I, just as an outsider here, when I hear provide, it sounds kind of flat. Mm -hmm. Like, is there a more muscular verb? In in, involve the community with their government. That's well, good. yeah, that, that's the other side of it. I think we should have that's that. That's part so, of it. I mean, that is part of it. It's what the, yes, it's not combine those two languages there. That's the idea, Donna. How do we combine those two languages? What's what's the first one that you start? We started with. I said involve the community in, with their government. But in, involve community. But responsible and engaged. When we when we yeah. wrote this, what we meant was that we want to be. Uh, Active. Open to and actively engaged in what uh, what the people in our community want. So we want to encourage and participation. Also to be good, transparent, accountable. Right. Good yes. Job, Do yeah. responsible. That was part of the engagement. Yes. Yep. Both Goes both ways. Two. Mm -hmm. It was a twofer. Mm -hmm. So when you when you're setting this as a goal for the city, you're saying the city would be responsible. At, like more responsible and engaged, or like what's the yes. what's different by saying it's a goal, community. as opposed to a value? Like, what are you gonna? What? How is this a goal that that's changing something? You well, done? Well, from that, we got our communication person. Sorry, oh, I can't remember your title. <laughs> Uh, so we have a, a public works new newsletter that's just awesome, as well as other things that are happening in that Absolutely. realm. Sure. Our communication, we've definitely acted on this a lot. Okay, so let me go back to the beginning of this conversation. Sorry to, sorry to make it harder than it has to be, but it, it, it does matter. Um, there's a couple different versions. One is responsible government, that's responsible engaged government. The other one is actively engaging with citizens. What, is there a bridge between those two concepts that is important in this, or, or should we put the statement from last year on? Well, we, it seems like we, one thing we want to do is, and, and I'm not sure it's clear in this goal, is encourage citizen engagement. Um, and I don't see that in provide responsible engaged government. I see that as government pushing out and not so much taking in. That covers what Jack's talking about, I think. <coughs> so encourage. Citizen engagement. I see a bunch of heads nodding, so let's try that, okay? And see if this is useful. Encourage. Okay. Let me just read what we've got. Well, that to me won't stand alone if you're not also including this other part. The part of us being responsible and engaging. That yeah. we're putting out a lot of communications, yeah. cleaning up our website, creating newsletters. Let's strategies, though, okay. to so accomplish the goal. Let's look but, at what the way you have for goals and, let, and then I we'll think, keep adding to this. But I just want to make sure that we recognize what we've done so far. Rebuild and plan for future resilience. Reduce the hardship of homelessness. I love that. Meet people's basic needs. Connect with the world beyond Montpelier. Create more housing. Build and maintain sustainable infrastructure. Encourage citizen engagement. Improve public health and safety. Practice good environmental stewardship. Is there anything missing from what you what you know what you bring to the table as representing the people of your parts of town that you think is most that you're on fire about that you think the public cares most about that you want to drive forward in the next year in terms of big picture goals? It's a pretty good list. Yes, Lauren. I I like the ideas. I feel like. It doesn't feel very visionary. It's like baseline to me. It's like, let's reduce hardship. Let's meet people's basic needs, which I think is like really meaningful. But like, 
as we work to let everyone thrive or like something like it feels like like we just want you to like barely get by is what it feels like and we you know we're not going to try to get rid of homelessness we're just going to be like let's give you a better tent for the winter or something like I don't know I just feel to me like the issues are right but then like how we're putting it if this is like our goals and our vision it feels like these might be more like the strategies like when we're getting into the nitty-gritty of what this year we can really do but like yeah. I would just like us to be a little more aspirational well, in how we're wording like, them I think like you know Elon Musk wants to go to Mars in three years right like, <laughs> 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 we're not him right it doesn't but, stay <laughs> what, what, what are some of those more audacious things Laura that you would want to say well it doesn't even necessarily need to be audacious I would just like like, our, you could say, you know, like we could rewrite them as like, maybe, maybe ensure is too strong a word, but something like ensure a clean and healthy environment for all, like, or work towards, you know, like you could say stuff like that that are the same sentiments, yeah. but just feel better. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think are more like what we're working towards. Well, yeah. Like what we really want to do. Gap between this one and what we had here that she felt was too improve community prosperity was too much up there. There was some way to connect those two. I was going to say, economic development is sort of missing from this, and I think well, that, that's important to the community. It's obvious they, they just yeah. mucked out like 100 basements, you know? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. This is what, we, this, is what so, this was tied to. Sal, do you have a recommendation for work? Would you want to have improved community prosperity on the wall? Well, I, I would like to have something like improved community prosperity. I understand what Kerry's saying about the word prosperity. I mean, prosperity is, is a thriving thing, which is what it's Lauren's so after. And you could add for all, and it would be more inclusive than just prosperity for some. That's true. So it is related to economic development, how we can take the, uh, OK, I will make it like, so we use city budget to um, you know, fulfill all these goals, which is coming from uh, mostly uh, taxes, right? Taxpayers. So how we can reduce that burden on public and create more financial support for city services? But I don't know how to, like in Turkey, most of the cities have their own, like, companies, like they make bread, sell it with a lower price, they make money and also help public. So I don't know how much we can do it, but just like they have their own corporations, right? So yes, something like that. So instead of using taxpayers' money all the time, we create our own financial support. But Actually, we're not legally allowed to compete with the private sector. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But <laughs> I don't know. Maybe something else. Yeah, it's but just you're right. Yeah, no, just you're then, right. yeah. Because yeah, it's sure. a public service. And again, yeah. this is yeah. this is Montpelier. This is America. It could be different. There might be strategies around that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know how. Be done that are... Because nonprofit can also yeah, sure. sell things, raise money, right? It doesn't have to be a private organization or corporation. Yeah, Again, it's just an idea, so it will engaging yeah. all kinds of private. And it, and it might uh, support economic development. It might support the community prosperity. So I guess yeah. my question is between what you're saying about economic development and what Sal's saying about prosperity. Is there, <coughs> and what you're saying, Lauren, about a big, a big, like positive goal about well-being, or what? Like, where are you? What's the outcome that you'd like to all see from all of that kind of? Is it prosperity? Is there another word? I think prosperity is a fine word. I you know, argue for putting improved com community prosperity. You know, in the last three months, what I've been, I talked to a lot of people in Mont Montpelier and outside of Montpelier, and people have been constantly talking about how sad it is to go through downtown and the businesses are closed and it's like being in a ghost town and you don't feel like you're in the community that uh, that you have come to know and love because it doesn't have the activity that uh, that we need to have to keep keep the community going and we want people to be able to have jobs we want people people to be able to buy things 
in Montpelier as opposed to going outside of Montpelier. And I think that's all included in community prosperity. And there may be another phrase for it, but when, when we're putting that on there, I think that's what we had in mind. Yeah. Well, and it's not just the consequence of the flood. It's, it's COVID and, and, yep. and people not coming into the offices anymore. And you know, a lot of that stuff has really affected the economic activity. And yep. We, yep. we need to prop that up. We're, we're going to like write up one or two more. Um, so we won't, we don't need to debate any of them. We're just kind of, we're going to have a minute to grab our pizza or whatever the food is. And then we can start championing what we think is most important of these goals, OK? So Donna, and then, and then you were waiting. Probably sort of radical. I really like the six we have. And I would plug these in that are in addition to that, such as uh, meet people's basic need under prosperity as a priority strategy, along with the economic development statement that's already there. So everything there I would plug in, but I wouldn't change the base goals. Well, let's I think, come back to that and yeah. as, we're, as we're championing what, let's see if some of these could be combined, OK? Because maybe you're right. Um, are there any other ideas for big goals that aren't on the wall of your tin? Well, economic development, I mean, we, we really aren't looking ahead well. We, don't, we have a strategic economic development plan, and it just kind of fizzled. Um, is it up for renewal now? This well, we had, because we created that. And then everything went back. Yeah. yeah. But we really last, are looking ahead. Last year, the money for that plan we actually put into the Country Club Road. That's where we've been investing our economic development money right now is into that project. Yeah, so we're not really looking at the big picture. We're looking at kind of a project. And right now, with the times we're in and all these changes happening around us every day, there are actually an incredible number of opportunities. And if we were looking ahead and planning for that, um, we could probably be pulling up some really significant things for the future. But we're in today's mode worrying about some stores that haven't opened, which people are working on anyway, and they will open. But we're not, it's hard to get out of this mode to look where we should be looking. So I don't know how to say that as a goal. Um, so is the goal a, a strong economic development plan, or is it, you know, what answers that, Tim? It's like you're almost raising a question more than an answer. I know, it's like we have to have. How do we? Is that a strategy, Tim, that you would? put in to make action real Enact clear. Enact strategic economic development plan? Yeah, like improved community prosperity is going to come from a strategic economic development plan, essentially. Yeah. But do you want to have a, so maybe that is a strategy and not. OK. Don't let it go, though. And my heavens, you should share those ideas, even if we can't do them. And they just point of history, the, the, the community really prosperity can. goal initially started as a combination of economic development, um, downtown promotion, and actually financial management. So the idea being, if you're watching the tax rate, that helps community. Yeah. So it was, that was, it was meant to be those kind of categories. Now it's evolved over time, but that's what, that was what those words were about. I'm going to just park it as a key strategy for right now, okay? Okay. And we'll come back to it. All right. Any, park it. Any other goals? Last, last so goal. I don't know if it's a real goal. Maybe it will connect with other ones. But how about providing or sustain affordable living, right? All the taxes are raising all the, again, it's just a, like a general things I'm talking about. Every, every single thing related to living in Montpelier, financially raising. And I cannot talk for other people. Personal experience, my salary is same. And it will be same for a long time. Yeah. And I cannot afford living here if it goes yeah. like that. But I don't know how to make it like a advanced, sustain or, yeah, provide. Montpelier's affordability. Something like that, yeah. You didn't like the word renting. excellent. The word affordable is equally <laughs> hard to define. <laughs> adjectives, <laughs> adjectives are all Yeah, hard like, like high. rents are all going high, uh, high, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 People yeah. cannot yeah. rent, so it's all like ev everything. It and, uh, is, it's a huge problem. So, so I, I heard that they cannot, some of the schools cannot hire teachers because teacher salary cannot pay the rent or buy a house or like, mm -hmm. they, is, that's why they don't come to Montpelier to work. Is, is it? Enhancing affordability, like then you'd have a lot of strategies yeah, that yes. could connect with that. We're not again. We're not adopting any yeah. of these yet. We're putting them on the wall for further discussion. Okay, so let's let's put that up too.
Okay. Are we good? Shall we stop and have some things in? And we can talk a little bit more about these. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, what's the what's the plan, Kelly, for food? How will we do that? How you distribute it? Well, we get the pizzas over here. Um, maybe we Water. could open them up a little bit. Okay, and then, and there's plates um, right here. Sort of like a. And there's salads. Maybe in the window sills, I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay. And plan for future resilience. Reduce the hardship of homelessness. Probably it's enhance affordability. So we keep them all as not ING, but just birds. Meet people's basic needs. Improve community prosperity. Connect with the world beyond Montpelier. Create more housing. Build and maintain sustainable infrastructure. Encourage citizen engagement. Improve public health and safety. Practice good environmental stewardship. And Tim had suggested strategic economic development plan. And I wonder if that's a strategy that you do to reach one of these. I wonder, Tim, though, if we could say advance the economy to improve community prosperity or something like that. And then it would say, well, what are you doing? What's the strategy? And the strategy would be obvious, or at least part of it would be. Does that work for you? OK, so let's, let's put that on. So now we've got a list of, of big ideas on the wall. You could have. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You could have eleven strategy or big goals for the future. Um, I was on a school board once where the, the superintendent came in and said the best way to do nothing is to have 25 goals mm -hmm. and give your superintendent all these balls and they don't get any of them done or they don't do very well. The, the thing that you see in communities when they line up around action is they set four or five goals and they knock those down in the year and the next year you're ready for other goals because you've made significant progress, right? So you don't necessarily need 11. It's not my place to say how many you're going to come out with. But when you look at this list, one of the things Donna suggested is maybe some of these are reverse coins of each other. Like sometimes people will say, um, you know, at a community meeting they'll say, well, let's, let's uh, Let's fight drugs in our community among teens. And then, and then five minutes later, someone will say, let's give our teens something more to do. And they'll realize that actually they're talking about two sides of the same coin, and they unite those kinds of ideas. So I, I guess there's a question. Are some of these flips of, of, of a single idea that if we combined, it, it might simplify the process? So that's one thing you su can suggest. The other thing you can suggest is say, well, listen, for me, creating more housing is the most important thing on the wall. And I think we all should use this. So you, you have the opportunity now to advocate. Nobody gets 10 minutes to give a speech about your philosophy of homelessness or housing. But you, you say some pointed things about why one of these things is most important for the future of Montpelier that, that the city government and you all as city councilors want to drive forward. Table? No, I want you to take, I want okay. people who have a passion and want to say something to take the floor and tell us what's most important to you in terms of these priorities. Why are they important? Which ones should be priorities? Yes, please. Enhancing, enhancing affordability. Enhancing affordability. Yeah, because most of the things can go under that. Okay, thank you. Other things that are really important to you. Tim. I think the infrastructure piece has to be in the top couple. Are there particular things in infrastructure that you think of as being essential needs that aren't? That We've been dealing a lot with water system issues, sewer system issues will be parallel with that, and streets. There's some street issues. <laughs> okay. 
Yes, Donna. I think rebuild and plan for future. Oh, oh, that's all. Without that done, all this rest is going to be pushed to the side. Yeah, 10 years from now, there's another flood and nothing's been done. Three years. People Next are going to ask you about year. it, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah, okay. Other, other things oh, that are most important, Sal. I the, the homelessness issue, I think, is something that uh, just isn't going to go away by itself. It, it, needs, it needs us to take some, some action. And it should, be a, it should be at the level, not of a committee, but of city council paying attention to it and driving it. I think the higher up, the better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. OK, thanks. Uh, um, create more housing. I think that means we didn't make nearly the progress on that in the past year that I think we hoped we would. So I'd like to keep it there. Yeah. Bill was pointing out that some of your six, you know, you had six goals last year. They're, they're, you're not necessarily going to be done with this goal right. at the end of 2024, right? <laughs> like housing. Is, it, some of these things are going to take five years to do. But you're saying this is our absolute priority as we look at the big picture of what we're trying to drive forward with all the engine of city government right now. Tim. I'm comfortable calling it that. I think some of the other sort of goals that are good goals that are built into what we're already doing, and they will happen anyway, like encouraging citizen engagement, I think we're doing a great job. We'll keep enhancing that. But it doesn't need to be. If we want several that we can focus on and get something done, um, the five, the ones we've listed, I think, cover it for me. Okay. Other, other things that are important to other people. I'm sorry, uh, Tim, you said the one we've listed, the one we've verbally listed, mm -hmm. or? Can you take a marker, can you take a marker, like a yeah, let's, star, a bunch of ones Which ones were those? Um, this one? Um, homelessness. This one? Uh, affordability. Connection. Housing. Create more housing. Housing and infrastructure. Housing and infrastructure. You're still going to vote. No prosperity. You're still going to vote. Yeah, so there's still economic prosperity. There's still um, advance the economy to improve community prosperity, meet people's basic needs, connect with the world beyond Montpelier, encourage citizen engagement, improve public health and safety, practice good environmental stewardship. Are there any of these that aren't really big goals unto themselves, but maybe practices that are actually part of your value statement? When I look at when I look at practice good environmental stewardship, I almost see that as like a practice that goes through everything in government rather than a particular priority. But that's just me. Yes. I mean the most particular we have is city net zero plan that I do think, I hope we remain committed to. And so I, I don't want to lose that, although I could see that if we fun. reword the rebuild um, oh, and, and, and work towards uh, climate resilience, yeah. then that to me would capture, I think we could put net zero and like the kind of like that's going to be there's going to be water work related to that. Like yeah, I, I think that to me would capture those, a lot of the stuff that we can put there. Those fall under under that certainly. Yes. And I think the connect with the group beyond Montpelier should be a long term goal or a vision. Okay. We cannot do this like one year, but it's related to future of our town. Yeah. So. And can I ask you what, what, what you really mean by that and why it should be important to the, to the city of Pilger? Yeah, it is for diversity, right? It also includes all the things we talk about, cultural diversity. So we talk about it, but Montpelier leaves not based on that diversity that much. Right, so likewise, city doesn't have any international center, right? We start offering this, oh, you can translate these things into these languages, which is great, right? Similar things will connect you with the world. 
But <coughs> we talked about connecting with the world or connecting with an increasingly diverse community within Montpelier. And diversity in our services to connect with people. Uh, in my opinion, connect with the world beyond Montpelier helps you create more <coughs> inclusive and diverse life here. Yeah. That's my point. I, I, the, the way you started that conversation, like saying that connecting to the world, learning from others, yeah. being open to diversity, all those things are sort of, like you said, that could be part of our vision or our values. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is. Yeah. We have diversity. We don't just name the world, but we can change mm -hmm. that language. Yeah, so what's the current language? You want to read that, Donna? Yeah. Because the, I, I think it's a point that means a lot to you and probably means a lot to others, too, in this community. Yeah. Diversity, equity, and inclusion in the organization and the community with a global sense or a global focus or? Global mindset, you know, something like that. Might put something like that in yeah, there. Global mindset, global vision. I don't know, like something like that. Because uh, I was talking to um, former mayor of Burlington, mm -hmm. and he explained how many things city under his mayorship learned uh, from other did places. Did global yes projects People right create global projects, but working in locally. So maybe we can invite him, and he can talk about you know other towns, not other towns Burlington is doing, but you know we can. With the state uh, capital of uh, state, we can do these things. So yeah. again, it's not a goal. It's 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 a it's like a, a value, yeah. like an yeah. ongoing value. And maybe there's a way to add that in. So I know Kelly's going to be taking a note on this, but it's sort of yeah. like when you're affirming diversity, equity, and inclusion, you're also affirming the importance of multicultural awareness from beyond, the, from other parts of the world, and best practices and models that are being used in other places in the world. So that we're a learning community. We don't just think, oh, well, Montpelier, we've got it all figured out. Um, and so having something about that in the, the values might be a way to encapsulate that. So it sounds like you're saying that that, could, that one can come off as a, as a big goal. It's something that is sort of a, yeah. should be part of the values. Because, because as you said, we should focus on goals tonight, yes. but yep. we shouldn't That's forget that idea because it's the future. I think that is very well said, and I think that, 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 that nothing, gets, nothing gets lost. Yeah. Right? Everything you're thinking about now should be held. Like, you had 10 ideas for priorities, and these are the ones we're really zeroing in on this year. It doesn't mean the others aren't important. Yeah, like we can do, it's just the brainstorming. Like so many exchange students in high school, yeah. did they have a city tour? Did they experience the public services? Yeah. Like, I don't know, fire department? Like there are so many things. That's being global mindset, right? They, are, they come here, they stay, they spend their time in high school, and they leave. Yeah. But they don't really experience the community. Some of them live very far away from Montpelier, so their host family drive them to the high school, take them from high school to the home. So that's what I was trying. It doesn't have to be, oh, we will travel all around the world. No, just show that we, as a town, we have a global awareness. Mind. And yeah, awareness. Yeah. Then I yes. think that's all very well said. Yeah. So thank you so much. Let, let's. So if but, I'm, if I'm yes, a business so. person I, and I'm reading these goals, I'm wondering, you know, what's in it for me? I presumably, we create more housing. You know, there's more business, but I mean, that, that improving community prosperity thing seems, particularly under the circumstances, unless it's something that we fold under the rebuild, the rebuild goal, because yeah. the, you know the business environment is changing. For you know, for for the folks downtown, and I think we need to um, you know help them solve that problem. Okay, yeah, I would keep that too. Yeah. yeah. So we want to star there. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know where the stars got 
link over here because <laughs> well, because Tim said I, gonna, something about I, I, I agree know, with those got, five, yeah, to, and I wanted to know what five he. Yeah, but and, <laughs> in a way, we're going to go to voting in just a minute. You're going to get to put your own stars up on the ones that you think are most important. Uh, so let's let's champion a few more, and then we'll do a quick vote to see where they kind of shake down for people. Lauren. Um, I guess I just I want to be clear. I want to make sure that like climate resilience or environmental, if we're not naming it as a standalone, that it's built into the like should planning. This, yeah, should yeah, this be yeah. Yeah. tied onto the bottom? I think it could yeah. be, and I think that's fine. I and I like the idea of fewer goals yeah, that we're focused so, yeah. on. Yeah. Is there um, anyone who doesn't want to see this put on our resilience issues? Are yeah, and then like the infrastructure, a lot of our resources, we, resilience yeah. and sustainability issues too. Just to um, say we build and plan for future Resilience in the face of climate change? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, something like that. Or just climate resilience. Yeah. Um, I did just also want to say, like, I totally agree that affordability is an issue for our community, and it means very different things to some people. That just means cut taxes. It could mean short-sighted decisions that save money now but cost us all a lot more or put costs onto our kids. But like, I just want to be really careful. Like, I don't really love that phraseology just by itself. To I feel like it's more often used as a let's cut taxes, cut services, do less. <laughs> so. You want me to do something with that, or you're just saying you don't think it's enhancing affordability as a, as a standalone is a good one for it? I don't. I don't either. I don't have a board on that. I think that if you're working to advance the economy and improve community prosperity, you're sort of looking, you might want to throw for all. And that would mean that you're looking at affordability for lower income. And, and the one above it, I feel, goes in there, the basic needs and affordability. So is that make sense to people that we would take this advancing affordability off as something by itself? I'm seeing nods. Does anyone not want to do that? Okay. So we're starting to get to let's look at what's standing here. Um, Whose hardship of homelessness? There was a um, I would put that under again more housing maybe. Uh, Better than to have it as self standing. Reduce goal. the hardship of homelessness. <laughs> Bill, I was going to make my one and only plug for the work our staff did today. Um, just to give you some thoughts. One of the things that we, we kind of said was for us to recommend to you the top three issues, and I think you're already well housing, homelessness, flood recovery, and infrastructure. Um, but I really wanted to make the plug for the um, however we call it, the, the public health and safety, we included under that uh, providing resources for unhoused individuals, develop emergency preparedness capacity, addressing mental health and addiction issues, and providing community resources for healthy activities. So it was kind of a broader, a lot of our activities fall under that, but um, so we basically wanted to include the, this, however you want to word public the homeless, this thing under public health and safety. When you but, think of it that way, do you think of meeting people's basic needs as fitting under that? Could. I, mean, I, I think wouldn't fit under there. You wouldn't necessarily. So I, I agree with what Bill said. Like because and, and yeah. this addressing the needs of addressing homelessness was part of improved public health and safety before. And I think that you know we could easily say, well, Public health and safety is just a basic function of government. We don't need to have that be a goal. But um, we've got needs in yeah. public health and safety that are not being addressed now. Yeah. And so, so I would put the housing, the homelessness part within that. Um, what do people think about that? That addressing, improving public health and safety you know, fun, one of the most fundamental things would be reducing the hardship of homelessness. So it should fit under that. Yes, Carrie. Um, I, I agree with that basic idea. Um, I think that homelessness falls under a couple of these, at yeah. least. Yeah. So there's, and I don't like the phrase reduce the hardship of homelessness, because it kind of sounds like we just want to make it 
easier to be homeless or nicer to be homeless, but we'll be, we want to reduce homelessness, but we also want to make things better for people who are homeless, even if we can't get them someplace yeah. to live. Yeah. So that definitely falls under public health and safety, I think. But then additional housing and affordable housing comes under create more housing, as well as probably improve community prosperity so people can afford the rent or so well, rent is yeah, lower. So it's yeah, so it, it falls under a few different yeah. ones. Improve services. So but you started by saying you would agree that having homelessness under here makes sense since instead of having it stay alone. I mean, I could be persuaded to leave it as its own goal because it is such a pressing need right now uh, that yeah, it might was, be something to... I don't want to, yeah. I'm but, just concerned with elevating it when it didn't get sort of yeah. lost in... But I could also be persuaded to, to I, I mean, include I, a strategy. It needs more attention was, than it's getting. Yeah. You know, I look at these things now. There's one, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's one. I thought we were going to move homelessness partnership over to public safety. I, it would be good if it was like a motion. You know, if, if someone would say, I move that we do that, yes, Donna. I move. What, that you move that we move. Home, yes, and, and there's a way to reword it, as Carrie was saying, in a more positive way, to improve uh, circumstances for those in homelessness, reduce, as well as. It's reduce homelessness and the well, harm, hardship of homelessness or something. I know, which I, I was picking up from Carrie to put it in a positive vein, mm -hmm. that to improve the condition of those homeless. Okay. Is that sort of what you were saying? Yeah. yeah. And I like the context that Bill gave us on the staff's recommendations for public health and safety. I mean, it, yeah. it's a broad, well, you know, it's a pretty broad now. category. Homelessness does fit there. Um, it's a little wordy, but I, it was something like improve public health and safety for all residents, including the unhoused. Yeah, I like that. So that gets it into the top level. So just because yeah. I see yeah. right there, yeah. I mean, it's like our top three of our staff, and to not name it seems. Yeah, well, that's a great suggestion. Well, so wait a second. Let's slow down enough to take things off when we're changing them. Does that mean we don't need this one? That's right. Right. <clears throat> Everyone's nodding on that. I made the motion. Do you really want it to be second? No, no, it's not. Let's not make a motion. Vote. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. He said make a motion. Well, if you get an operating consensus, we will. But when it gets, when it's ten ideas, you just need to nail something down. So I'm going to make a motion. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay Build and maintain sustainable infrastructure. Create more housing. Meet people's basic needs. Rebuild and plan for future resilience in the face of climate change. Practice good stewardship, environmental stewardship. Encourage citizen engagement. Someone saying encouraging Engagement is a strategy rather than a goal. Um, I don't care. Mm. I thought you said that. Uh, yeah, so to, me, under, <clears throat> yes, to me, one of the things that we were aiming for in the original, putting that in there with in, uh, responsible and engaged communication was we were really thinking of all the ways in which we hadn't communicated with people. We started including social media, newsletters, and so we were really making a city effort outward. To me, that's too weak to be a major goal. <laughs> so Encourage I, engagement. Yeah, that, well, that's, that's there, but I still see us needing to do what we do. We keep working on it, and that we keep strengthening our city outreach as well as encouraging the citizens. Yeah. Uh, I agree. The, the reason I mentioned it, uh, when I first moved back in 2017, there, there was something called CAN, uh, Capital Area Networks, I think, mm -hmm. which suddenly disappeared. And I think we missed it, like during the flood. It would have been, it would have been great to have that network available. So to me, it was, oh, okay. it's a good idea. And it didn't work the first time we tried it. So, but I, I think it's worth doing, partly because we don't, uh, 
there, are, there isn't enough engagement. People don't come to meetings. They don't read the news. You know, they, <laughs> they need someone to sort of sp spoon feed it to them. And if you have people organized by neighborhoods, you've got somebody who not only knows where everybody is and what their situation is, but you've got somebody who can sort of summarize. I mean, imagine having all those representatives at meetings so that, I mean, the minutes is, is just a legal record of, of whether we voted or not, but it doesn't really give people the information that they need. And instead, we get, you know, we get the questions about it. Um, the idea was just to, to yep. work to bring something like that back. So, I'm, I'm here so it, it doesn't need to be top level, I, but I think it's, it's something worth talking about. Yeah. Well, let's keep it on until we are ready to let it go. Let, so I have a question for you all. Do you guys want to like take six dots and put dots on the things that are most important to you? Or do you want to, do you think we're really close to not, maybe we don't need to kick anything off the island? I don't know. Well, I, I let one go. I feel uncomfortable in trying to meet people's basic needs. I know we've gotten more and more into social services kinds of things, but I feel that's just huge. <laughs> and as much as we can move towards it with having human services and other connections for people, especially around homelessness, I just feel like that's not really our role to be a major goal. I, can, I think it as a subdivision, but the that's all. The city's not a social welfare system? One, yes, Lauren. One thought just is kind of like mirrors the um, public health and safety one a little bit, but I wonder if we reworded the improve community prosperity for all residents and local businesses, because then we're kind of getting at like every, all in, we mean that for both individuals and for our local business community, so right now, so instead of advance the, and I would take off, if I did that, I would take off advance the economy too. It would, I would just say it more generally, improve community prosperity, and you're, we're gonna have different strategies for business, for our local businesses, and for okay. residents. so you still have a strategy, I think that would be similar to what Tim's yeah. idea was. I think if you name the businesses, then you're getting at that that mm -hmm. is where you would capture the economic since, development. Since that was your piece, Tim, that okay with you? Community and business prosperity for all? Community prosperity for residents and business and local businesses. For residents and businesses. And businesses. We'll see local. We're all over the place. <laughs> We're not working nice for Amazon. Lauren said, you know, when I see meet people's basic needs, there's something that was kind of bug bugging me about it, and now I, I recognize that it's the city government is not going to meet people's basic needs, but we want to do a whole bunch of things that will create the circumstances whereby yes. people's basic needs will be met. Right? Yes. Including yes. public health and safety. Yes. Advancing prosperity, providing more housing, maintaining sustainable infrastructure, rebuilding, planning for future resilience with, the, with stewardship, and engaging citizens. Yeah. So that we, might, we can probably, I think we can take that one down. So he's, he's suggesting we take it down. Yes. Uh, I will just say that, can we not put including the unhoused, just say improve public health and safety for all? When we say including, like they are separate part of the community, oh yeah, we will include you too, but they are in the all. Look. I, I think you're making an important point. So long as so, we don't forget and we build strategies around yeah, so the unhealthy. Then we can put the meet people's basic needs under that, like we were discussing. So basic needs and those who are Improve homeless. public health and the safety. This is a strategy. Yeah, that's, that's what help, I was saying. Im improve public health and safety and help meet people's basic needs. I've seen some people shaking their heads, they're not sure about it. I like the way that um, Jack worded it, but I would put it there like under a strategy versus as a, as a major statement within the goal. Would that be comfortable? I like the way Jack worded it. Yeah, I do Wait, too. say it again, Jack. Um, <laughs> Can you, do you have it? There we, go. we want to create uh, circumstances by means of, you know, this community, improved community prosperity, whereby the, the community and the uh, and the economy, where people's basic needs are met in in the community and the economy. 
I liked it as a, as a subdivision statement. Yeah. Because it was much briefer that we were. Yes, we, just we where, were creating circumstances to meet people's basic in needs. In which people's basic needs yeah. are met, yes. That's what I liked. Which could be public support of people, or it could be um, economic activity that like gives people jobs to this support state, themselves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't in put it in the original state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right up there, one like the first. Yeah, side. that sounds that sounds all right. Okay. So the word community there is 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 covered by what we added, uh, <laughs> citizens and businesses. So we don't we don't well, need community I, in there I like anymore. The, I like the, the specifying it though, because I'm a, I was always a little vague when I looked at that. Like, what does that mean? Community prosperity exactly? Does it mean like District Heat is making a lot of money? Does it mean you know? Well, that's what I'm saying. We take the word community out. Oh, take it out. Take it out because it's. So we've specified what, what we're talking about by adding residents and business. Right. 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 So remember, we're not making a decision to adopt these tonight. <laughs> oh, sure you're going to see an iteration of this. You're going to get to move it around, push it back and forth a little bit towards adoption at some point. That then becomes fundamental to the actions of the city, works into your budget and so forth as you go forward. Let's look at what we've got. So the, the different goals on the table would be to rebuild and plan for future resilience in the face of climate change, practicing good environmental stewardship is like a subtopic, our practice there. Encourage citizen engagement. Create more housing. Build and maintain sustainable infrastructure. Improve public health and safety for all, including the unhoused, or did we want to get rid of yeah, like we don't say improve public health and safety for all, including children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. Or, yeah. they are in yeah. all, yeah. so yeah. I think it sounds it's, same it's like when we say unhoused. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. You, so you guys need to remember that you're going to hold the city staff accountable to have strategies yeah. around the unhoused yeah. under this category, because yeah. I think that was essential to you all, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then improved <clears throat> community prosperity for for residents and businesses in which people's basic needs are met. Yeah, and I suggest that we don't need the word community there because we specified who the community is, yeah. the residents and the businesses, yeah, right? I agree. Someone else said they liked it while yeah. you were saying that. But okay. does anyone want to defend the word community? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Improved prosperity for, for residents and businesses where people's basic needs are met, or so that people's basic needs are met? Yeah, so that. Okay. So, Will, you're going to have a chance to do that kind of uh, language stuff. Yes. Yeah, so just back to the encouraged citizen engagement. This yes. One, that feels like sort of a partial one to me. Yes. It feels yes. like it's, it's kind of about um, running a government that is, that encourages citizen engagement, that's accountable, and transparent and responsible and all that. But I do think it, it, it's that bigger picture of how we kind of we run a good city government that encourages Great. citizen it, it engagement. It kind of comes back to what you started with yeah. at the beginning of the evening, why you ran for office. It was about democracy. Yeah. Like, encourage citizen engagement to empower the people of the city or to provide, to expand. Like, why? What, what is the outcome that you want from doing that? Bill, do you have any yeah, yeah. suggestion on that? I was thinking of that too. First of all, I think we should use resident, not citizen, um, just because not everyone's a citizen. But I was thinking something along the lines of actively engage, actively engage residents in good governance or for good governance or something like that. That when we're talking about quality of government, board, it becomes us. It's not just encouraging people to participate, but it's saying we will actively, we will reach out and actively engage people. So whether it's through networks or the stuff Evelyn's doing or all the other things, we will reach out, you know. It might even engage, engage them beyond the, the activities of government, right? Like governance, it's not just governance. It might be that are doing things in the streets or, you know, doing art or doing. Right, except we're a government. So yeah. that's, a, that's what we're doing. So I think engaging people to do other well, things is great too, but. You know. Engaging to enhance democracy? I mean, do you want the word democracy in there somewhere? No, I don't know. It I, might be a good reminder. I do kind of want accountability in there somewhere, because that's part of why we want citizen engagement, so that we know that we're doing what the, what the community wants us to do. We're accountable to that. Sal? Another one of the uh, inputs for me is um, 
I, I think there's some problems we don't solve unless we have real community engagement. So in, in the Homelessness Task Force meeting today, for example, one of the, one of the uh, guests to the meeting um, said that the, you know, the, listening to the testimony of that person from the gateway uh, tent really connected him with uh, an unhoused person in a way that he hadn't ever been connected before. And I, I think that in, unless a large number of people in the community wake up to that and experience that, we're, we, you know, we won't solve the problem. It, it'll always be pushed into the background. So it's not just networks and stuff, although I think that's important, but I think it's um, engaging in the problems that we're facing in a real, you know, sort of hands-on hands -on way. So the good, the good thing about this title, Encourage Citizen, citizen or, or Resident. resident. Yeah. I like resident. Engagement is that it covers anything you think strategically should happen to encourage engagement or to engage. <coughs> so you can build a set of a, a pretty broad set of strategies on how you're going to do what's going to change between last year and this year. If you're not doing anything different, you don't really need a goal. Um, so if you're going to take in this year, try to encourage engagement in a new way by activating citizens. You just you're already activating a new commission. You're you're looking at other potential actions. Is there? A, you're making a funny thing. Yeah, I, I agree that it's. I, I think we've done a great job, and we have a very engaged community, which has proven out more times this year than we're just so fortunate. But I look at the number of committees we have, and I really feel like. We should look at those kind of things and say we're bringing people out, they're getting engaged, but let's make sure we use them in ways that are that are going to, something's going to happen from them. We're not wasting their time because I think if we waste that public capital, it, 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 you never get it back. Yeah. Um, and I think our communications are fabulous, and the, the improvements we've made in in all these different enhancements. Um, yeah. And maybe Bill's had a you had like a tail on that that said why or for what end. Bill? Well, I was trying to capture the accountability piece, the good governance, the you know transparency, that kind of thing. Try to and you like that overreach. Encourage uh, that accountability too. So sort of we're engaging, we're, we're engaging the residents so that we have good governance, and that means whether we're giving them the services they want, or the transparency that they want, or the the programs they want, or the priorities they want. You know, we're trying to. Mayor. I'm thinking of what you said, Paul, a minute ago, <clears throat> which is that if you're not going to change anything, it doesn't need to be a goal. And I'm wondering, the way we talked about putting engagement with the world in our values, whether putting resident engagement in the, val in the values That's might be fundamental where we go rather than having it be one of our yeah. top-level goals. Yeah, I mean, I was just was having that same thought, and I looked back at what we had just read, and I mean, we've got engagement, like, interwoven throughout, and transparent, responsible government, so, I mean, I think, I guess my question, maybe it's like a staff question, is like, are there projects where having that as a standalone goal is helpful? Because like before, it was like, we were upgrading the website, we were doing specific things that it felt like a standalone, and like, you know, being able to hire Evelyn and all that was like, we wanted you to focus on, <laughs> we wanted us to focus on like building out that. So I don't know if there's st stuff well, that it seems like it's still really important to keep it as a standalone, or it was just like, keep doing what we're doing well, I think it really goes and down keep to, doing better. You know, I think you're right. The, the initiatives we took over the last couple of years were based on your communication that that was an important area yeah. in our own sense that we needed it. And you know, we have built out a lot of capacity. We have Evelyn, we've got a lot of things going, and we will continue to run that communications program. Um, if that's not the highest thing, you know, if you don't feel like you need a lot of council time on that, you know, we'll, that, that might be, it doesn't need to be a goal. Maybe it is just becomes part of our values. I think, you know, I, I guess, I, you know, I come from a place of our, our job is to deliver the services to the residents. And so I always feel whether that it's important for elected officials to say, 
we want to have good governance for our residents, even though we're going to probably try to do it anyway. It should always be a high goal. Now, the con, you know, the flip to that is, of course, that's what you want to do. It's what we do. It's in our values and all that stuff. It's not something we're calling out this year as a particular problem. So, whatever, really, wherever you come down on that, we we're, I think, you know, personally, I'm delighted with the the, the strides we've made on that front and. Um, I think people are, you know, I will just say this too, as far as resident engagement, there are, there, you know, there's a point where people choose not to engage. You know, they get the information and they just are like, you know, I'm happy things are going, uh, and I'm not saying this to be self-serving or, you know, but if things are going okay, they feel like they're getting information, they just, until they need something or they have a concern, they're happy, that they count on the folks they voted to, to do their thing, and that as long as they know they're getting it, they know how to get the information, you know, can't always make people. Okay. So we need to hear about, uh, one, one thing that I would say as a, as a little caveat in this, like I do a lot of strategic planning with organizations, and often they have a mission statement, and the, they have a value statement, but it's, it's sometimes called principles. In a way, what you've got here are your operating principles in some ways, accountability, engagement, public engagement. These are things that you stand for that you're accountable to the city council for every day, all the time. Like there's the big goals for the future, and then there's the things you're accountable to. And, and values are one of them. You can call it values, but really they're the principles that you've established by mutual consent that are the foundations for the way the city should be generally operating. Um, so, to me, I think that might be clear. If I were doing this, I would change value statement to principles or something like that, just as a to make it real and accountable, not just something that's nice. Like I, we care about that. It's not necessarily you care about it. It's a principle the way you work. Sorry for the editorial. It's okay, Mayor. Yeah, Bill. Bill just said something that uh, he's often said in this session in previous years, and he didn't mention uh, tonight until just now, which is that. One way to think about the, the goals at the very top are things that we really want to be spending time at the council level to address. Yeah. And the citizen or the resident engagement thing, that's something we just, we expect of our government. But, but I don't think that we're gonna need to spend a lot of time at the council thinking about how, telling the staff to do that and thinking about how we're going to do it. So that might take it out of goals and into values or principles. Yes. Yes, yeah, so I, I just want to make sure I'm really clear on what the strategic plan actually is. I think I'm, I think I'm putting it together. But in, in my prior experience working in the nonprofit world, a strategic plan kind of covers everything that you're going to do. And we seem to be talking about it as the sort of special things we're going to do or the things that are like we're going to talk about at council meetings that we want to, that we want to do differently. Like you just said, if you're not going to do anything differently, it doesn't need to be a goal. So if we think in terms of these are the things that we want to make sure we're making improvements to or doing differently, then where does everything else live? Like mm -hmm. we have to do, we have to take care of public safety and infrastructure and um, all that kind of stuff, whether we want to or not. You know, whether we put it in our strategic plan or not. So I, I guess I just would like a little bit more clarity about what our what the goals actually mean. Hmm. Well, I'll just weigh in on that. Um, where that becomes important what is when you get starting into projects and activities, because you know, just using this one that we're talking about, but I'm not really trying to beat on the deal, encourage citizen engagement. One of the items would be you know to conduct that survey again this year. So then, now that becomes an actual. So if, if you didn't have that here, where would that fall? Like, or would it just be, you know, so I think it, it does call out, you know, even if it's just delivering government, there might be a whole bunch of, we need to do this, we, you know, and, and obviously to some extent buying equipment, you know, getting plow blades, and you know, we're not gonna put our strategic plan by salt and sand, but you know, but we, but but we need to do, do it. it. <laughs> yeah, but we're not necessarily gonna have big discussions at city council about how many plows. Right. But, <clears throat> but, but this year we're going to be talking about rebuilding and planning for resilience, and we're going to be talking about infrastructure in more than just the regular. Right. How, how much sand do we need, kind of ways? So it, it feels like we've kind of bounced this around 
360 now in terms of whether engagement's up there or not. Um, yeah. I, if if it's not, up there, really you know, fun. you can take it off and not have it, or you can keep it there. If it's there, it says that you're going to look at strategies to to encourage citizen engagement. And if you take it off, it means that you're going to expect that that's part of the principles of the or, of the city anyway, and you're going to you're going to see that that's happening. And if it isn't the city councilors, you'll have you'll bring it up, you know. But if you have it on, then you're going to see something of a work plan. This is part of your work plan is to make sure that you're doing engagement. So we, we could do like a show of hands. We could still do the dot exercise on priorities. It feels like you've got six big things here. Um, but the, maybe someone could make a motion to take it off or to leave it on. Or, yes. I'll, I'll make a motion to leave it on and at least until it comes back for adoption next time. OK, so this is not a legal vote. No, this no, is no, not no, a legal no, vote. No. And we're not, it doesn't, this is, this is, yeah, I'm in charge here. No. Uh, so, uh, so you're just basically saying, in this draft, do you want to see that stay? Yeah. So his motion is that it goes in. We don't need a second. How many? Just raise your hands if you want to see it stay into the next edition. One, two, three. There's a majority. OK, so we. So with that, do we have a majority that says these six are, are good to go as for an iteration that comes back to you for improvement? All in favor, raise your hands. Oh, can I ask a question? Because it says 20, 324, so the goal setting. I think the first one should be our focus after the plot. So one, because we have one year to fulfill. So that, that's my understanding then. Look at the heading, right? The it heading. says it's a physical no, year 23, 24, right? We are talking about goal setting for a year. Yeah. Not 10 years. Right. Like create more housing is not a yearly goal, right? But we can just have text, take the goal one, rebuild and plan for future resilience. We can work about all the flood results, infrastructure, or whatever, but in a year, like one year. It, it's what I understood. Maybe I misunderstood. So when I look improve public health safety, it's not a one year goal. Yeah, it's just it's saying that. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a huge, yeah. Yeah, it's to say that over the next year, this is going to be a fundamental thing you're going to look at a lot, like like housing. And it it's not going to be done in a year necessarily, yeah. but you will have concentrated to move the ball forward on housing this year, that kind of thing. Yeah, because I know that our uh, staff can focus on different goals. Yes. Because that's their professional uh, field. But as a city council, which we said, I think our goal should be for this year, rebuild and plan for future resilience. Then talk about all the strategies, principles, ways, like projects, whatever. So that's just, a, I just want to raise my yeah. opinion. That's, yeah. Great. Uh, yes, Mayor. I, I was engaging in a conversation with a constituent just the other day about, <coughs> about that very question. And, and you know, I, I suggested this, right, as a, as a very top-level thing. But I think we also have to be looking beyond the immediate. And a lot of what we're talking about is looking beyond the immediate crisis to, to talk about the future. And a lot of these things, clearly, we're, n we're not going to, even if we spend all of every meeting on, on that goal for the next year, we will not have fixed everything with it in the, in the next year. And we're, we're not, even if we create a lot of housing in one year, we're not, it's not going to be enough that that's going to be done. Um, and, and I think that's true of a lot of these things. So I think that w just the way our staff can work on more than one thing at a time, we can expect ourselves to work on multiple major goals at a time. That's how I think of it. 
Yes, it's him. We're kind of in this process, and I think I'm trying to figure out who you are. We're both new, so maybe that's what we're but because I remember when I first met with you, Bill, before I was even elected when we were candidates, and you said, let's, and I was looking at this strategic plan and going, how can the first priority be prioritize recreation and parks as an economic driver? I mean, that just can't be our top priority. Yeah, they were, the numbers weren't really, it was just. So that's the explanation. Yeah. But still, how does someone read this or understand what we're doing and know what the priorities in our city well, you, are? You can, so in this years, doesn't do it for me. In years past, we've opted, the council's opted not to yeah. just say we have six priorities. You could, I mean, as part of this, you could choose to say these are our priorities. You know, in a way, you know, we as staff kind of said, hey, look, all of this is important. And, you know, sort of housing, homelessness, and infrastructure, and flood recovery are kind of, those are the exactly things. Exactly what I was going to get But to. everything else is important, too. But It is, but if you had to say <clears throat> top items, I, I don't know. And that's, you know, I mean, you essentially got that, that's your list. So are we, you know, you look at the agenda, and it says that at 7... 45, no, where are we? 745, brainstorm discussion on strategies to meet these goals. Should we take a little time to think about these goals? Are, are, are we okay with, with this list of goals for now, knowing that it's maybe not perfect and that it can be nuanced and you're going to get an iteration? Okay, so do people want to think, yes? Should we take a break? This point. <laughs> the bathrooms are out yeah. to the right. Where's the bathroom? Just out the door to the right. But we finish at eight thirty, right? That's the, even if we take a break. That's the goal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's take five because, minutes. Because of the kids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's take five minutes and come right back. It's a good pretend too. <laughs> the educational stuff on homeless people, and so that's. That's what I'm after. Yeah, that's that's okay. Now so we need to tease oh, yeah. that out. Yeah. 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 Now we've got said here's big yeah. things we want to accomplish. Now so what is it? Yeah. Let's put the meat on the bones. We've got a half hour already. left. We're not writing the whole strategic plan tonight. Staff are going to have a lot of ideas on things that would help advance these different things strategically. Um, so what what we're really doing is brainstorming key ideas that we might have that you think might be interesting to for the city to push forward that would advance these different issues and. Let's first, let's just walk through them and maybe just take five minutes or so for, um, you know, to, to throw darts at the wall with your ideas. Don't, and you don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to be right. Um, you just need to share your creative thinking about a particular thing in terms of practical st strategies that could advance an initiative. So rebuild and plan for future resilience in the face of climate change while practicing good environmental stewardship. Yes. I think we need to work with uh, <clears throat> building owners, uh, homeowners, and uh, commercial buildings to make sure that they're ready to go into this winter. Yeah, doing everything that they can. Yep. So Kel I'm Kel really going to count on you, Kelly. I'm not going to take notes on this, OK? Yeah. All right. Other ideas on? Yes, Tim. I think we need to support the New Resiliency Commission, too, because I think that's going to be a source for hopefully information we can use. I know Housing Vermont's trying to raise money, but their expectation was to be a partner. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, Go ahead. I think we should be seeking state and federal grant funding to be helping impacted residents and businesses. Um, such as the substantially damaged folks and whoever, but um, probably this would go on our lobbying plan or whatever. Um, I would love that you always think about going after these federal programs. There's so much money out there right now that we're not taking <laughs> <laughs> And oil companies. <laughs> and oil companies. Yeah. Uh, I was just thinking that we ought to uh, rather work. I know the Housing Committee is doing some of this, but we ought to work to provide, um, you know, energy efficient and resilient specifications for the development that we do, maybe a tiered level, so that we, we can get the best possible uh, products. So for it's, future buildings? Have to yeah, for, 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 for everything that gets built, we ought to, we ought to develop sort of a, an above code standard that encourages developers to, you know, 
exceed the minimum. Yeah. I mean, it goes to affordability because even it's higher initial cost, but over time, the savings when you look at truly contribute to affordability. Well and, you know, there's, Tim, you, you deal with this a lot. What do you, what do you think about that? Everybody I've seen is building to really high standards right now. You know, yeah. even if you built 10 years ago, your home is so outdated. So I would just be careful, just in terms of the way we seem to work as a city, of prescribing what we think are higher levels that we think are a good idea sure. with no tie to what it's going to cost. Yeah, no, I, I get it. So is okay. there a carrot and a stick on this, Tim? Like, it's like you're asking people to move things out of the cellar. Is there? Yeah, and then there's no financial help for that either. So yeah. personal hit. Do you think when we made the changes in 218, we made too many? Sorry? Of the standards, we made some changes in 218 that would mitigate. Well, they're national standards, too. Well, so that's, right. that's what they basically yeah. okay. okay. Well, so Sal's got an idea that yeah. is there for you to think about, and, and you're not solving it tonight. But um, good. Other, other thoughts about this? Rebuild, plan for future resilience, and environmental. Yes, Lauren. I, I guess I would now go under this one. Like, I think we should continue implementing our net zero plan? Yes, okay. zero. continue implementing net zero plan. Yes, Tim? It also seems like a lot of people out there are just talking about this. What to do with like the rivers? How do we, how to be more resilient, to be environmentally sensitive, but also there's people saying we need to dredge, you know, we need to find ways to make spaces where things can have, have you So know, evaluate all those opportunities yeah. to... Yeah. That could be a place, because I, I know that was one of the topics that the community forums identified, so the Resilience Commission's going to be looking at, so it could be like partnering with the commission to explore opportunities to, um, yeah. you know, and, and address. And the city's going to be able to that, Yeah, it's going to be a huge issue. issue. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sal. I was joking with Jack earlier, the shorthand for that goal is, uh, you know, hope for the best and plan for the worst. I, I think we, we have some potential climate disasters. Uh, heat and cold related that yep. we're probably not as well prepared for as we could be. I mean, we could have a drought. I mean, extremes are extremes drought. that are coming. Sure. Well, not thought, just one direction. Have fires like they have. Fires, so, sure. Yeah, all that is part of the awareness of this and strategies around that could be part of the story here. Yes. More Don. short term, I, I really would like some discussion uh, about our relationship with this uh, resiliency commission and what their role is and what ours is. I feel like we still need to keep moving on our level yes. and yet be in tune, but I, I would like further discussion and, and development of that. Yeah, you might want to invite their chair in to share their, what they're up to and game plan with you. Uh, yes? Just to keep beating the drum, I do think we need a specific focus and dedicated staff time looking at federal resources, um, Inflation Reduction Act, and, and I know that we are, but like, I, for example, was just talking to someone today from the state who said that the way some of the grants are working is basically they think only the state's going to get it, but cities are named and can participate in it, but we have to basically send them our ideas of what we want funding for, so I'm going to connect some um, so you're people. you're off to somebody so they, they know what you're seeing? Yeah, but like there's, you know, there's a five hundred million dollar grant the city's, the state's going to go after for climate mitigation efforts, and the cities are named as parties that should be able to take advantage of it. They can take our net zero plan, put it in there, but we have to be getting that to them. And so I think like this has to be a focus of how do we, if we're going to be able to afford to do the, the things we're naming, like there is unprecedented money, uh, as I've said a million times. But like we need a, we need I think a to dedicate some time yeah, to figuring that out. Efficiency Vermont is on the commission, for example, yeah. and how does Montpelier maximize what it's able to draw into businesses for um, for really efficient uh, appliances and so forth? Like, really get... Yeah, I agree. I think we're at a unique moment in time when it comes to available funding for this kind of stuff, for the kind of stuff that we need, infrastructure and... Yeah, but Lauren, you're a regular okay. library. You okay, got it. so other, other, I want to turn a corner to the next item, so it's more on... We are talking about what we could do as a city council, but uh, I think how um, we should be communicating with uh, our reps and senate senators. Mm -hmm. We don't know what they are doing. There or how they can help us, how we can help them. Yeah. So we should, I think, uh, open or um, increase the communication channels with them. Okay. 
keep you know, feedback both ways, and they can help with resources too, potentially. Yeah, and they were, some of them are part of the city council, so they know yeah. all the things we are dealing with. Yep. But there's no communication when they move. Yep. The other to the, the other building, let me say. <laughs> let's go. Let's take five minutes and think about what you would do to encourage citizen resident engagement. What are some of the strategies that should be advanced on? Well, I think we should explore the uh, networks, the neighborhood networks. That's again. CAN network. Yeah, the yeah. CAN. Yeah. 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 And what's the role of the city? Is the city the organizer of those networks? No, not 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 ideally. I think it's um, it needs to probably support it with some funding. Okay, just for technology and that sort of thing. Not much, but so what I other think that was one of the issues with the former can setup. Okay, Tim. So is one of our next priorities finalizing a new city plan. That's happening. It starts in January. Right, but it seems like that'd be a great way to engage. <coughs> oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So engage the public in helping oh, yeah. to build show the city up plan for in the future. <laughs> Other, yes, Mayor. Yeah. This is more of a tactic than a strategy, but it's a kind of it's been a pet idea of mine for years, which is to do a a recruiting fair, like a volunteer fair, where we get people from all who chair all the city uh, boards and commissions and say we're going to be out there we're going to have an event and anyone who ever thought about getting involved with the city you come and we'll talk to you about what we do and you'll we'll recruit people to be on these commissions and one of the things that i uh, my former daughter-in-law went to one time was uh, where she was working was her employer reach down to their employees and say, we'd like you to go to this thing and uh, have that represent us. Or, or just, you know, it's, it's like leadership development and uh, personal development for those people. Now, of course, lots of the people who work in businesses in Montpelier don't live in Montpelier, but lots do. Yeah. Good idea. On the table, so the are there other strategies that should be on this list? Yes. I, I mentioned this before. Um, December 5 is World Volunteers Day. Oh, okay. And we have all these like committees, but we, if, uh, we attend the specific committees we represent city council, but it will be nice to celebrate that day or create our <laughs> like volunteer yeah. Yeah, appreciation day. And it can show that rest of the public, we are working with public, they are engaged because I don't know how many committee members, at least 60, at least, wow. yeah. yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. And if they bring their families, maybe it's half of the town, I don't know, it's yeah, like. A celebration of volunteers and then you can invite others to Yeah, join. Yeah, it doesn't have to be too long, yeah. one hour, yeah. a couple hours, but just to, Make them feel feel they belong yeah. a bigger community by you know helping city right to yeah. to the Great. community. Okay. Are there any, anything else on this one? Are we ready to move on? Well, I, I, if we can make it somehow easier for people to access what we do at the council, um, I mean. It's difficult to, you can access, it's nice to be able to access an ORCA video, but to find what you're looking for is difficult. I don't know how hard it is to sort of chapterize the video, and, and when we get to a, an agenda item, you, you, you mark it. I mean, can you just tab it? I, you know, I don't know, but it makes it easier to find yeah. stuff that you're, the you're looking for. Nodding. Yeah, I mean, I get, I get emails from people who w want me to explain issues that, you know, it, it's all, all the information is out there. Yeah. Look They're at just the not eyes. getting it. They don't know where to find it. Yeah. We just need to help. I, you know, it would be great if we had one, one of the ideas for the network, uh, for the, the neighborhood network, is to have someone who's responsible for his group of, you know, 50 people to keep them informed. But 
a summary, uh, which is more work than probably tagging a video, but just some way to make it easier for people to access the information, partly because when they don't have, when, it, when they have no information, they supply their own version of what happened. Yeah. <laughs> they do I want to keep way, moving, and I'm going to ask people right. to be brief so that we can walk through all of these. I'm going to turn one more comment on engagement. Just quickly, I mean, I just generally would say, like, to like build on the expansion of communication tools that uh, the team's been rolling out. I mean, the other thought is there was all that work put into like the res collecting community response around how we engaged around the flood, and so there was like a lot of lessons learned. So how are we acting? And there were a lot of action items. So how, so making sure that we're following through on acting on and letting people know what action we're taking in response to the lessons learned there. Maybe just one more quick yep. thing. I, I don't know if there's a solution if we said it before, but I, I think people are very uncomfortable standing in front of the council and speaking. And if we, can, if we can make that easier, I think we'd have more people doing it. And maybe we don't want that. But um, it, it just seems to me that, that people have a hard time getting through those, those two or three minutes or five, as the case may be. Great. Right. Let's go to the next one, create more housing. And s strategies that are within the power of the city that you would like to see considered that would help advance more housing. Tim, you must have one. I do. Uh, okay. <laughs> simplify zoning. Simplify zoning. A lot. A lot. Yeah. If people don't realize how many barriers we built into it, and for good reasons, I'm sure, at some level. But any project you start, I mean, even look at the FEMA project we were going to do, and a month later, the staff came back with a change in zoning to allow it to happen on that site. It couldn't have happened there without a zoning change. We've got a lot of barriers built in, and I think we need to work on that. Other, other ideas on things? Yes. Um, I mean, I think continuing to develop out the Elks Club housing project, um, but also I'd really like to, like we've previously had some, I think kind of vague, like exploring other opportunities for more private housing development. Like I think either setting some more specific target, like. We want to work with at least three developers to help see projects through, which, which whether it's a partnership or just like identifying the barriers or something that we're like, how are we? I don't know. How I, are you getting proactive? How with are we getting pro, getting more proactive with like the developments that are, are underway? We know of a few who've come before us, but like, how are we helping? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you okay. can reach out, reach out to yeah. property owners of, of, un, of underutilized properties. Okay. Have someone in the city actually go out, talk to, you know, have a list of ten property owners, and you say, "Yeah, let's talk about your building or your field." Yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, I, you know, if I get my numbers, I look at the, I look at the pit in Montpelier, you know, the huge parking lot next to it. I look at that and say, "Wow, that, you know, there's a lot of air rights going to waste there." And it seems to me that we're at a a point where the feds and the state and, I mean, everybody who's got anything to do with the buildings that were flooded along that street is trying to figure out what to do next, and they're about to spend a whole pile of money. Yeah. And maybe they should spend it on something that converts the, the pit into something more useful than a ground-level parking lot, yeah. which is right smack in the center of town, a block from Main Street. Yeah, the governor's the taking a lot of economic development plan. We could it would be yeah, amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Part of the economic development plan. The, the governor's putting all that energy into North Barry with big, big goal, goals and bringing in developers and putting in some money. And why not partner with the state right here? Uh, you know, I think this is a unique opportunity for us to, re, you know, visit that idea with those, particularly with those of landowners. Resilient buildings and re, and recovery strategy. Yeah. Okay. Other, other ideas that should be on the table for that housing? Knowing that you're going to add to this, this is just starting brainstorm, right? OK. Build and maintain sustainable infrastructure. What are some of the things that we ought to be thinking about there? We have the plans that works. So the so water line plan. We got a what? The water line plan is the biggest one. <laughs> and then figure out how to fund it all. OK. And that's going to be something that will be a priority for this year. <laughs> Is there other infrastructure 
the next phases for the water. We have a long list of infrastructure <laughs> projects that are already. They don't need to be enumerated right now, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you'll add those in, right? No, I'll trouble filling those boxes. Is there anything that a city councilor wants to say about this before we know that this will be fertile ground um, for future? I mean, I just laid the, the groundwork for the city council was saying we do have a huge list, like kind of listed of the big ticket items on the end, and figuring out how to sort of come up with a funding plan for all of them over the next five to ten years is going to be the biggest yeah. heavy lift we probably and have. the city council will have some role in prioritizing that list, huh? Okay. Improve public health and safety for all. So here we, you want to have the homelessness strategy. I don't know what the homelessness strategy is to make their lives, what were the words that you, people were using um, to take some of reduce the hardship? Reduce the hardship. Improve their situation. Improve. Well, and think more specifically than that to make sure there is winter shelter for in, Mont in Montpelier for everybody. Okay, so there's it. a specific strategy. Yeah. Work towards developing winter shelter for anyone who's home without a home. Well, they also need a day center. They also need access to uh, services. Um, yep. Yeah. You can't have a winter shelter without the services, you're right. Okay. Bathrooms, showers, meals. Right. Okay. Great. Campgrounds. And then, in general, public health and safety, are there other things that would be priority strategies for you as city councilors? I'm looking, at, I, I, I'm sure you guys are aware, you, you know, your chief of police, your, your chief of fire, fire department, your, your civic people are here and are online and are um, fighting the battle every day and deserve commendation every day. Um, but are there, are there anything that you think is, is missing or that should be prioritized strategically as things go forward that you think of right now? This uh, robbery happened right last week. So what happened? Like maybe informing public? We, we, we were informed it happened, but also maybe we can inform public about the result. So it was scary seeing that picture, and I learned that the place later on. But I don't know when we talk about yeah, safety. I mean, about the incident, there yeah. was a press release announcing the arrest. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, then I missed it. Yeah, it's so. in the paper. Paper, okay. Else. Yeah, and we sent, we sent it. Well, that, yeah. But let's not, that, yeah. what you're saying is try to improve in communications around incidents like that. Yeah. And that could be, you know, that could be online, it could be front porch, front, it could yeah. be any number of ways that people gather information. Yeah. So and it's a good point to make. Yeah, if I missed it, then, yeah, and you're like, on city council, so yeah. <laughs> so other people are missing it too. Um, other, I, I yeah, I take the blame. So. <laughs> uh, Lauren, um, just I mean I think it's in the staff list, but just to name like for me it's like continue working to like expand the peer support outreach workers, try to fill the social worker position, which I know has been really challenging, but it's. And just, just in general, like continuing the progress made towards the police review committee report, which we've been steadily implementing in great ways. So just kind of keeping yeah. on that track. All that's so important. It needs to be tracked. Yep. Anything else in this category? OK, so improved community prosperity for residents and businesses so that people's basic needs are met. Not beautiful language. Probably you guys will figure better language for that, but part of this comes from Tim's idea that there should be a strategic economic development plan. There should be a big idea process of what the economy can do and how it could grow and what, what are the best opportunities and so forth. Towns and cities do this stuff, yes. So I think it would be great if we 
uh, took the concept of a walkable city and tried to have that as a goal for ourselves. And we don't necessarily have to declare that we're trying to achieve anything, but to think about what's happening downtown and how, so for instance, the post office, if the post office is actually considering leaving downtown, that would be really bad for downtown. And so I'm not quite sure the way to say that, but something that's is supporting the the health of downtown and the and that you know even as people are thinking about moving away from the river maybe because they don't want to flood but that we're not going to lose anything crucial from our downtown and that I don't know how to so what the, what the we could say strategy there is keep the post office downtown we could say that we yeah. want, that's one of the things we want to make sure we yeah. and the, not our control but yeah. I think the parks already have that walkable goal. Okay. Works here. Yeah. The so post what would you office do to keep, keep the post office here? I mean, I, I think the commission's wrestling with this one too, and they might bring the congressional staffs together. You know, Bernie Sanders has saved post offices in Vermont, whatever, whatever else. I mean, he's, I what's that? I, don't know, I, well, I mean, they're in the parking lot. They're not even in that building yet. They were promised that building. That's why they moved to the Barry Montpelier Road, and they're still out in their trucks. But the big picture. Yeah. yeah we need, we need to mean, find we them need, a space. We, we don't. So I, I, now we're getting hey. We don't really have any information from them about no. what right. are they planning to rebuild the company. We don't know. So maybe we need. We to can't have a dialogue until we have a yeah. Dialogue. Yeah. So let let's let's not get into the tiny tactics because you don't Sorry. know yet. But but it but <laughs> the walkability of downtown. Supporting the idea of keeping that post office walkable in the downtown. Are there other economic development strategies that you'd like to see? Well, we know it's going on everywhere. Offices, you know, people are working from home, and there's a lot of empty office space in town that you know is going to be converting over to, to residential. And I think we should create incentives and help that to happen. What are, are there incentives other places used, Tim? I don't know. Okay, but, but, but look at those incentives and, yeah. and think of ways to help be, make it in the interest of landlords to. Turn it into housing. Help them convert them. Great. Other ideas on housing, or on, or sorry, on public <laughs> health and safety. I could no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm on the last one. Slave <laughs> community <laughs> prosperity for residents and businesses. Are there other strategic things that we should be listing? I wonder about supporting all of the community meals that are happening in in town. Um, you know, like the churches are offering lunches, and that's that's part partly that's about supporting people who are unhoused. But it's not just unhoused people who eat that those meals. It's about food security. And so I don't know if there's something that if there's something we can do to facilitate that, or if that's been something we've done in the past. Yeah, whether that's in the power of the city. Uh, yeah, I but, don't know. Put it in the list as something to think about, right? As you're defining your strategies. Yes. Prosperity for all, and maybe because we're a tight community and we have a lot of utilities, we're fortunate. But it seems like broadband access for everyone is really critical. Yeah. I mean, and especially going through yeah, the pandemic and how many children were just disconnected from schools because they didn't have good internet at home. Um, is that a community goal to say? That's like an infrastructure, sustainable infrastructure project yeah. as well. Yeah. I'm not sure where we are with that in Montpelier. It, whether it's affordable to everybody, it's probably here. It's here. Right? It's just not affordable to the poor. I was noticing in the uh, plan how important the surrounding area was to yes, Montpelier. Regional. The yeah. regional, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a regional thing that's going on economically. And maybe we it need to. It always has been. Yes. Yeah. We need yeah. to promote that more, particularly since we've sort of lost the stuff that we take for granted, you know, the office workers and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Just promote a more regional profile for the city the businesses. Center. Yeah. Yeah. Um, continue to, uh, <clears throat> to work on outdoor recreation as an economic development driver. Yes. Yeah. OK. So that's a lot. That's a lot of really good ideas and a lot of lot for city as a citizen, I just would thank you all for being on the line. It's a long, hard job being on this council. And you guys are doing good, hard work for the community. You're listening. You're setting creative strategies for the future. You're looking at basic human needs. So good on you. Uh, again, it's a real honor to be part of the conversation. And I'd turn it back to the mayor if he has closing reflections. Um, but it feels like uh, an evening well spent to me. I agree. I think this is what 
you know, what, I, what I said at the beginning about what I appreciated being on the council is that we really have people who are committed to the good of the city and committed to working together to uh, to get there. And and tonight, not many people have been watching on uh, on Zoom, but I it's on going to be on YouTube too, and I hope people see that that because people are people are here to work for the city and. Uh, and we'll get through this stuff. If I could just ask a technical question, what would you all like next and when? So we'll we'll draft this up. I mean, do you want our next week's council meeting to try to wrap this up? Do you want another work session? Do you want like what? Where? How? What are you feeling? You need to to finish this. I think for me, it helped to have a draft and then decide yeah, if we needed a work did. session. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll try for next week. We may not have it in Friday's packet, but we'll try. We'll have another council meeting next week. Yeah, have another council meeting next week. <laughs> That's all right. So when we will be able to share these ideas with our um, constituents? I mean, this was all public. Okay, so, so that's what I'm, you know, yeah. you know, is it okay to discuss? This Maybe they will give some feedback. Yeah. So because it yeah. is public, it's okay, right? Oh, we yeah, don't have to everything. wait. Okay. Everything. Yeah, I mean, it nothing's, just, as long as it's check. clear this isn't approved, it's not final, but here's yeah. what we're talking about. Okay. I mean, and once we submit a draft to you, that'll be a public document. So. Great. So, okay. Thank you. So we'll just try to move this as quickly as we can along with everything else we've got going. I want to thank the staff for this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm using it. Well, look at that. And we started a little late, and we're adjourning a little early. So we, uh, we adjourn at 8.25 p.m. Yeah. In, in all my Thank years you, for engaging. In all my years of doing meetings, I've never heard anyone object to getting on. Thanks, Alice.